<laughs> and welcome to the Media Speaks live show, another live Saturday show. I'm D Lake for Prez, David Lake, and I'm joined tonight by, or today, you know, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are at. We're on different time zones, but I'm here with Kyle Phillips, our superstar technician there, Kyle Phillips. Hello, everybody. <laughs> He's on the boards. He's got the sounds. <laughs> and uh, he's our master uh, producer. And we also are joined by Anthony Court of the Court Report. Hey, what's up, D-Lake? How you doing there? Doing good, pal. And you're coming through really good today. Uh, I have a feeling that this is going to be a great show. Uh, this is uh, like our third, fourth uh, Saturday hangout. We had uh, some technical difficulties last Saturday. But we uh, we did a four-hour live show on election night, you guys. Come on. Very long show. Give it up for the Media Speaks. We had a lot of views on there, and I thought it was a great show. I think today's going to be an excellent show. Yeah, give it up for the Media Speaks, right? Yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, Kyle, what's going on there? We're working on getting a guest on today's show, everybody. A yep. guest. We're working on getting uh, Sam from Correct Views, who is also another person who is part of the InfoWars contest with us. Um, we're having a few technical right. difficulties because, as it turns out, you cannot invite a cell phone to a Google Hangout once it's been made live on air. So we're working on getting him in, at least on an audio feed on his computer. We'll see how that goes. Is it something that only you'll be able to hear, or what? how's that going to work? Um, once he comes in, once he comes in, we should all be able to talk to him, all be able to hear him. Uh, it's all about just getting the settings set up. Okay, well, hey, done. so uh, Kyle's working on that, and that's great. I mean, he's been working on a lot of stuff lately. He's been working on the website. Uh, and Court and I have been putting out reports, and uh, Court just did a rant last night about the Gaza and all the affairs going on over there. And Court, would you like to talk a little bit more about that and uh, highlight – Highlight uh, what were the main points that you came across in that research? Well, I know uh, getting into this issue, it can be kind of uh, controversial. People seem to have strong opinions about it or don't know anything about it at all. Um, but I myself, I think that uh, the, me the mainstream media uh, essentially is downplaying uh, the the Israeli Israelis part in their bombing and uh, their excessiveness in this uh, situation this conflict I mean we barely heard about the uh, Hamas leader being killed and then sure enough they uh, show rockets being fired on Tel Aviv and they show their rockets being fired and say that it's Hamas's rockets being fired so there's a little bit of disinformation there and I made this report to sort of point this out and uh, to actually call out this uh, couple of people on Facebook making really right. ignorant comments. Because and, uh, news gets, uh, that's kind of those affairs going on over there, and it's it sounds like a lot of rockets being fired, and however many rockets and uh, leaders of uh, certain areas and organizations like Hamas being uh, killed in those rocket attacks, and that only provokes people more. And I mean, anytime you fire rockets, that's a uh, that's provoking uh, the people that are being bombed, right? I mean, innocent children. Well, exactly, children, right? and I, mean, I don't think people really understand how small this piece of land that they're bombing is. I mean, you this said is it was probably like a speck of salt. I mean, yeah, it's like a speck of salt. It's like shooting it into a small town. I mean, mm -hmm. of course, there's going to be civilian casualties. You can't just go bombing away, uh, trying to get a few little uh, dissenters. I mean. Um, and later on in the video, I, I call up this lady. She says she has to go change her diaper. Like, that's more important than this news of these children being bombed. Uh, when she could having to be tend to her child's head wound. I mean, they don't take this seriously. What if it was her child that was in this bombing, uh, in these bombings? And not necessarily everybody uh, that's Palestinian there wants this conflict, wants this violence. And I'm not going to defend their violence and them shooting the rockets. I think there should be di more diplomacy on both sides. Don't get me wrong. I don't like to bring, I mean, it's all about religion. And I, I don't think, I think that if we can live here in the United States uh, cohesively next to each other, if, if Jews, Muslims, Christians, everything can live next to each other here in the United States, then why the hell can't we do this in Israel? Why can't we uh, 
evenly split up the land, call it Palestine, Israel. I don't get it. I mean, it's just people holding on to these ideologies and taking it to the extreme here. And then the U.S. sits back and backs Israel's uh, Israel strikes. I mean, doesn't oh, condemn it. So uh, it's for you. <laughs> yeah, good for you, Israel. Killing people, innocent people, and then just saying, oh, well, they're putting the innocent people near the targets. That's some bullshit right there. So is uh, Netanyahu, is that uh, is that who's uh, responsible or on a rampage, or what's going on with that? I mean, that guy was holding up a well, picture he's, of a uh, Well, he's the one who said it. Ran- yeah. Well, yeah, he's the one ordering the strikes, of course, and... Oh. I firmly believe a place has, uh, you know, any country, any sovereign nation has the right to defend itself. But you have to remember Israel's history. The, this land was given back to these people, uh, taken away from the people that are now in Gaza. So it, it's sort of like if you look at the United States, I mean, they're no different than Native Americans, but it's an ongoing situation that's never ended. Um, hey, they've been com- – okay. Uh, I'm sorry. That was good. Uh, Kyle – uh, how do you feel about uh, Joe Biden uh, being uh, referring to uh, Netanyahu as BB? Do you have any thoughts about that? And I didn't hear that. Mess- he, he referred to him as what? BB in the in the debates. Joe Biden's like, oh, BB, BB, our friend BB. And uh, well, they sound like bedmates there, huh? Little uh, little uh, <laughs> little bed names for each other. <laughs> they have little pet names, and they call each other by little pet names. Well, I mean, I don't know what I don't know what, what his relationship is. Is it's like a boyfriend girlfriend situation between right? <laughs> and Kyle, didn't you uh, didn't you uh, produce a video that illustrated that point with Barbie dolls and Ken dolls or something like that? Yeah, uh, can the, you talk uh, a little bit about that and the, the relationship with Israel? I mean, well, yeah, pretty much. And I will say right off the bat, Court knows a lot more about the Israel Iran conflict than I do, but. I just made a short little one minute video pointing out how pretty much the situation here is Israel is America's girlfriend um, and Iran is the equivalent of like a guy slapping your girlfriend's ass at the bar. <laughs> and America is the boyfriend who in, instead of saying, hey, fuck off, uh, says, uh, <laughs> I'm going to destroy you over this. And when Russia and China come in and get involved, which in the video I compare to Iran's frat buddies, uh, uh, a very small issue that pertains to very few people uh, becomes a huge issue where everybody is involved. And that's, that's mostly dealing with Iran, though. And this more recent news court is uh, more about Gaza and, 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 and Palestine and Israel and rockets being launched and several people being killed and assassinated but yeah and now they're talking inter- about a, a full ground invasion and like oh. that's gonna solve everything oh hello hey, Sam's in. Sam can we hear you all right Sam can we hear you well we'll give in. Sam a minute to uh, connect there yeah and hopefully please we got uh, court continue and uh, hopefully we'll be able to hear from Sam if Sam can hear us try to get that audio issue worked out but he's in the hangout uh, court please continue well, no problem. I mean, just look what it, uh, Israel's been doing lately the past uh, few weeks. I mean, they bombed uh, Syria. Uh, they're definitely testing their uh, military uh, uh, capabilities. And now they're talking about uh, ground invasions of uh, Gaza Strip. Uh, <laughs> exactly. Ground invasion, attack sounds. It's getting crazy. It's getting hectic out there. Uh, and I, I almost think that how they're treating the Palestinians is how the globalists plan to treat constitutionalists here in the United States via, I mean, if, if it goes beyond FIBA camp and we're in our own area, they wall us off, they start bombing the shit out of us, what the hell are we going to do, right? You're seeing a parallel there, and weren't you saying in that report that you also were seeing a parallel of what's going on in Palestine with the Native Americans and that history in well, America? Well, I, I definitely think there's a big similarity. I mean, I kind of compare it to the Apache tribe who never really gave up. I mean, look at Geronimo. They, they were chasing him till the end. He didn't give up till the end, right? Mm-hmm. And I, I sort of feel like that's how the Palestinians are, but they uh, hold a little bit of – they pull a little bit of, uh, you know, uh, extremist uh, religious views into the mix, uh, yeah. making, that, making it that much more complicated. Um, and uh, just like Ron Paul said, I mean – 
we're we're responsible. Israel and, and the U.S. is responsible for creating Hamas. We created this enemy. It's just like Al Qaeda. We created our enemy that we're fighting. So this is just this is that whole agent provocateur situation. They're just creating the enemy, uh, propping up their little dictator that they can uh, point the finger at in the end, and it just. You uh, use as an excuse uh, for all this the, bloodshed. Exactly. Yeah. May, a may, it, may, it may be a cross cross comparison. It may not be exactly the same, but it's very similar. Mm -hmm. um, but it's just a. Uh, I think it's uh, Israel's testing their uh, capabilities. The U.S. is backing that because um, we're we're they're going to need us for Iran. They they've been uh, you know malingering for Iran for a, a while now, and I think Obama has been quiet about it. Uh, because of the election, but I think now that uh, election's over, he's going to let Israel uh, move whatever chess pieces they want. I don't know what you think. What do you think about that, Kyle Phillips? Sorry, I'm on the phone with. Uh, the right <laughs> Never now. mind. I'm trying. How about you? Uh, How about can, you, D Lake? Yeah, for sure. We can see that uh, Kyle is trying to work out audio issues, and we're still trying to get the correct views. Uh, Sam onto this hangout, and. Uh, Great points, Court. What I think is um, that there was a lot of stuff that was held over and uh, was very much prolonged in the news. Uh, in uh, on a perfect timeline with the election, and okay, so we had the uh, September attacks in Benghazi. That was in September. Then we had the month of October. Then. Uh, November and November 6th in the election of Obama and uh, on my timeline notes here I have a big arrow that says Hurricane Sandy that occurred also on that timeline and it's it's so uh, weird and fascinating how the news gets shuffled around and prolonged and it's like hey yeah. it's, it's going to be a bunch of he said she said over Benghazi until after we know who the president is going to be and D Lake was trying to cover that issue I have several all kinds of notes, and uh, and Susan Rice, what she said, you know, shortly after, uh, days after the attacks, and then this past week, Obama's like, well, come after me then. You come after me, and are you guys getting things worked out? I don't know. Sam's probably itching to chime in on this. I don't know, but... Uh, well, the thing about that is he's defending uh, the Federal Reserve's voice with Susan Rice. Uh, well, he if you says, think about come it. after me. She's the U.N. ambassador. I mean... All this UN talk and crap, and uh, we need to get the hell out of that United Nations garbage. And uh, well, I have, of course. Uh, I, I still have. Uh, luckily, I printed this out. You know, I, I'm into printing out articles nowadays, and and I, and I wish I had a better filing system. But uh, this is back <laughs> from uh, September 19th, the 19th of September, months ago, like two months ago, right? Obama official Benghazi was a terrorist attack. I would quote. I would say yes. They were killed in the course of a terrorist attack on our embassy. Matt Olson, the director of National Counterterrorism Center. And, you know, it just goes on. And uh, I have more documents of uh, Obama. His uh, speech, I have the transcript from, uh, he's given a speech to the United Nations General Assembly where he's blaming the movie. And now Petraeus is saying that all his uh, documentation and his take on it was removed and edited by the Obama administration. Well, they they completely uh, smothered the uh, chance of us figuring out what that's what they're doing right now. They're completely smothering the chance of us figuring out what really happened, uh, mm -hmm. what, what's really going on here. Um, but the, I mean, I think it's quite obvious what happened. It's obviously a, a cover up, and uh, I think this is Obama's Watergate, uh, if I do say so myself. Uh, even more so than Fast and Furious. Look at the amount of people uh, leaving his administration just after uh, re-election. I mean, I think it is obviously connected to the Benghazi situation. Um, there was also that theory that uh, it was a way to get us uh, to take out to take out Petraeus to get us more active uh, with the CIA. I'm not really quite sure about that theory, but I've, I've heard a couple of different things bouncing against the wall there. Mm -hmm. Um and uh, you were made a point about Susan Rice earlier, uh, how he def uh, defended her. If you look at Susan Rice's history, she has uh, deep ties to the secretive uh, private Federal Reserve System. Her father, uh, a former chairman who uh, died a few years back. So that's the Federal Reserve's arm, uh, globalist arm, in, uh, as our mouthpiece to in, in the United Nations. Um, 
that's obviously why she's uh, backing uh, Israel's attacks on the innocent Palestinians. Um, oh, she's all, at, at her position as uh, United Nations ambassador. She's all for that. Oh yeah, well, and that's the, the that Rothschild connection who helped create this Zionist state, and that's the mouthpiece they've uh, they have in there right now. She has deep ties to this Federal Reserve, and not much people. Uh, I haven't heard much people say that, but she really does. And I'm not downplaying Obama's involvement. Uh, uh, yes. Hold, uh, court, hold it. Uh, uh, finish what you're saying, but I'm hearing a phone ringing. We might be getting Sam in here, but court, uh, continue uh, with that, that thought. That. Oh no, it's all right. Um, basically, I was saying that I'm not downplaying Obama's involvement. He, but he's obviously taking attention away from the uh, Federal Reserve mouthpiece. Right. Uh, I mean, he's basically he's. This just shows how much of a puppet he really is. This is just say, hey, focus on me. Don't focus on the people we can really take down yeah, that are yeah. part of. Yeah, hey, yeah. Can, that, can, you, can I just have one second here to try something? Uh, hey, Sam, can you hear us? I sure can. Okay, can you guys hear Sam? Yeah, we can. If you could increase uh, Sam, or if Kyle, one of you guys could increase Sam's audio. Oh, I can't hear them. I have my headphones on. How's that? Wait, I have my I have my computer on. Let me try something. Yeah, you you're gonna have to listen probably through your computer, Sam. Can you guys hear them okay? I can hear them. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Good, good, good. Yeah, you, you're going to need headphones on or whatever to listen. Uh, yeah, Sam, if your speakers are playing, you need to turn those down and use switch to headphones. Yeah, switch the headphones on the, on the YouTube or the Hangout stream. <laughs> echo, echo. Oh, good. There we go. All right, yeah, he's switching it. Hey, we can hear you. Hey, Sam, we can hear you. Can you hear us? It is a miracle. Yes, I am delighted to be on. How are you? Can I? We're just, doing great, man. Speaking of just a miracle, I'm just going to show you guys real quick this ridiculous setup that I have with two oh, computers. Cool. <laughs> but I did figure it out. We got him on. Yeah. He is a Good genius. Stuff. I was like watching him do this here, literally, while you guys were doing the show. Oh, you weren't watching. You weren't watching us. <laughs> no. <laughs> hey, uh, Sam, it's great to have you on. Can you can you say your little uh, tagline intro to to your show, The Correct Views, please? <laughs> yes. And greetings, unsettled souls. And uh, I, as as we definitely are, um, I just did a report on this, and I I always worry that we forget that there are two sides creating a mess here, mm -hmm. and that the the media, and I mentioned this, is saying that Hamas led this particular round of attacks. And I was on my show mentioning that we have two sides here that think it's better to cut the baby in half than it is to raise the baby together, to use the analogy. They're just destroying the land. And both sides are an equal part of this. Well, yeah, like I was said, I... I um... I don't back the uh, rocket attacks, but I was just trying to re-argue the point that, that Hamas was created by Israel, and they, they, they put their enemy in place to, uh, I, in my opinion, validate this bloodshed. But, um, yeah, I think there should definitely be more diplomacy. I mean, l like I said, Susan Rice has a deep connection in this and is, co and is letting them get away, fire away, as I said in my, my Gaza rant last night. Um because they they have that tie to the Rothschild through the Federal Reserve Bank, which helped create the Zionist state, and that's my opinion. Um, actually, there's a lot of facts behind that. But uh, continue on. I want to hear more of your thoughts on this uh, situation, there, Sam. Um, I think at this point, um, again, I almost believe that Ron Paul was right. Israel has enough um, nuclear deterrence alone, and. Who, we're going to stir the bees' nest no matter which side we go on. It might be best to literally just let them solve this itself. Do you think the country would be able to make it if uh, we did that, though? Because under the current administration, they won't allow us to become energy sufficient. Well, that's true. I mean, it's... Uh... Uh, I don't know if you heard me earlier, but I was comparing how they treat the Palestinians sort of like uh, Native Americans. And... Uh... And uh, on a slant, uh, Iran, they don't want them to uh, develop. They don't want them to become a thriving nation. They want to thwart, in a, uh, they want to thwart them from rising up. And uh, I sort of think this is also part of the globalist plan. And maybe sort of a, a test of how to treat dis a dissenting uh, group of people within a nation, say like the United States, like constitutionalists, 
uh, that will eventually uh, rise up against uh, a tyrannical government. Hey, a great point, Court, and that's a perfect segue into uh, all this uh, talk and uh, information going on, on, primarily on the Internet, on whitehouse.gov, where they opened the door and invited people to petition seceding from the Union, the United States of America, becoming their own state. And uh, I know that uh, The Correct Views has done some reporting about that. I know uh, Court and I have, and Phillips and I have talked about that. And uh, why don't we move the discussion into that arena? And um, Sam, could you please uh, talk a little bit about secession, what it means to you? You covered the myths of secession. And can you talk a little bit about that, and you guys? I would love to, yes. Uh, sure. Thank you. Um, I think more than anything, we need to make sure what are we seceding to. And I haven't signed anything yet because I want to see what what it is that we're signing into. I don't want to sign into, I use the analogy of if uh, New York State did it. Does that mean that New York City is the capital, and now the capital has laws that restrict what size Pepsi I can have? I want to make sure that we're <laughs> Bloomberg doing Law. Hey, hey, we're gonna, we're gonna, hey, we're going to, we're going to, hey, hey, Sam, hey, Sam, Sam, the document says we're going to secede from the United States and live under Bloomberg Law. Will you sign that document? <laughs> I'll, pass, I'll pass on that one, and I'm one of the people that think most pop is poison, but it's it's sort of a principle thing. Mm -hmm. So, hey, Sam, did did you sign it for your state, or where did you stand on the actual petition itself? Because, like, I signed the one for Illinois, but not because I want to secede, but because I want to send a message to the Obama administration that we're not going to put up with the things that we're they're doing. Kyle, you put your name on that list. You I signed. Can, I'm on so many lists, man. That's the least of my concerns. <laughs> Your name is on the list, pal. We were all in the InfoWars reporter contest. We're already. I'm sure we're on the list for the, from that alone. <laughs> hey, hey, speaking of that, Sam, yeah, you were in the InfoWars reporter contest. You got pretty far. I think we all did. But uh, you actually uh, put out a documentary sort of after or, or while we were waiting for the uh, judges to return, which took about two months, and uh, but yet they managed to see about a dozen Hollywood movies uh, during that time, and uh, also, but also go to Chantilly, Virginia, where you went, met up with them, met Alex Jones, actually interviewed him uh, for your documentary, Bilderberg: What It Meant to Me, right? That, that was <laughs> I love the effect. That is uh, that's right, and I was amazed by. It left you with this sense of unity that you was hoping that this was a group of people that you could all keep together because everybody there was so on fire for different reasons. That was great. I mean, the documentary is great. I've had a chance to watch most of it on YouTube, man. Thanks for putting that out Thank there. You. Very good work. Hey, can you say the name of the video for the viewers so they can go watch that? Yes, yeah, it's Bilderberg, Why It Mattered to Me, and it is back up once again. Um, if anybody wants to buy it, it's ten dollars. If they want to just download it, they're welcome to do so. Oh, and what yeah. YouTube channel is that on? What's your YouTube name? Uh, the Correct Views. Uh, the YouTube dot com slash The Correct Views. That's right, The Correct Views, and I'm subscribed to that channel. I have been for a while. I really like your videos. And, uh, yeah, and if, if you haven't subscribed to it, you really should right now after this, after you watch this, though. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully you're watching this because you're subscribed to uh, The Media Speaks, and we're teamed up today with uh, The Correct Views on the Saturday Live Show. And, uh, Kyle, do we have anybody watching? Can you see any green lights? Oh, uh, yeah, we got a viewer. Dan Florence here. <laughs> All right, D4, it's always the first viewer. That's something that we've had to deal with. But, uh, uh, hey, Sam. You've been going through. You've been going through a lot lately. Uh, first, uh, all your uh, awesome videos and stuff disappeared from YouTube, and then. Uh, but to be more serious, more recently, you had a loss in your family, and your father passed away. And um, my condolences and our condolences, sir. Thank you, and I'm I'm glad you've mentioned it because I I cannot stress two things enough for anyone that listens regarding this. One is do not ignore your routine. So by that I mean your routine check on your gallbladder or whatever. He was told in May that his gallbladder wasn't showing, and he put it off over fear of surgery. 
and it ended up being gallbladder cancer that spread to his liver. The other thing that I can't stress enough is he was a non-drinker who died of this. He, the last time I got drunk with him was maybe the third or fourth time I'd ever seen him drunk in his life, and it was over a decade ago. So this is a diabetic who lived off aspartame, who lived off of Walmart food, and just like one of the rats, he died of a disease that is associated with a drinker. And that says it all. Yeah. And that, that's just horrible. I'm sorry to hear that it's happened to you, Sam. I mean, it's, uh, it's never easy to lose a family member like that. Definitely, and our condolences go yeah. to you and the rest of your family too, because that's a tough thing. I can I can definitely understand. I lost my dad when I was seventeen. You know, it's it's never it's it's never easy to take. There's no way really to deal with it. You just gotta right. And we're we're opening up here, and uh, it's a sort of a sensitive moment. I mean, I'm I'm feeling like we should have a moment of silence here. But my father uh, passed away 14 years ago. Uh, Melanoma, skin cancer. Uh, he was in oh, the wow. Navy. He was in the Navy at uh, 20 years, and you're like, you never really know. I mean, you kind of have a sense of stuff. Actually, I mean, when this was all going down that long ago, I, I was in the library reading books and stuff, and um, you know, I didn't have the power of the internet and as much uh, information. And uh, you can filter your own information, but even on face Facebook alone and YouTube and stuff, I mean. A World Without Cancer by Edward G. Griffin and um, e even more scientific studies. And um, I know, Sam, you like to, uh, when you talk about this, and uh, we've kind of uh, been down the same road uh, talking about GMOs and stuff, it's like, go take a look at the pictures of those rats. And my dad had big tumors on his neck and half his face paralyzed from fucking tumors like a rat, yeah. like a lab rat. My dad had a tracheotomy, you know, and it's like I wonder yeah. myself all the time if we would have been spending more time looking into the causes of cancer as well as looking into the cures and spent more time educating people about GMO and aspartame and fluoride and different things that are carcinogenic, not just the alcohol and the cigarettes, you know, because, because there's a lot of Amish people who smoke and drink just as much as we do out here and they ain't dying of cancer at nearly the same rates. And here we have yeah. three out of four people in this room whose dads died of cancer. You know, that's that's something that I've thought I've spent a lot of time thinking about. Yeah, and George Burns yeah. lived to be a hundred years old, smoking those big stogies and probably drinking like a mad dog. But uh, <laughs> but but he wasn't yeah. drinking he wasn't drinking Pepsi or Coca Cola. And uh, I mean, uh, he yeah, he wasn't eating, eating cornflakes. He wasn't eating Kellogg's, and, I, and I, I, I thought it was such a big loss when Prop 37 didn't pass, and which really makes me think that they fixed these elections. Because how many people have you asked that said they voted no on Prop 37? You know, I mean, they want us to be poisoned with this, and it's just so unfortunate that, I mean, here in, on this hangout, all of us, almost all of us, have been affected by this, and. This is just, you know, cancer has been going up the, the last couple of decades more than ever, right? I mean, ever and, since and the intro Court, introduction of this. Court, you and I are here in uh, California, and uh, uh, Kyle, you're in uh, uh, Illinois. Yep, right by Chicago. And Sam, you're in Ohio, is that right? Yes, it is. All right. Well, out here, if you, you know, I, I know you covered this, uh, California, the Prop 37, and um the labeling of GMOs, and can we hear your thoughts, Sam, on GMO labeling, and, and where do we go from here? Prop 37 didn't pass, and what the fuck? Or, excuse me, but, I mean, what's up with that? <laughs> Tom Hanks, Tom Hanks. It reminds me of something that I was talking about in terms of the voting. Um, I'm sure many of you have heard that there are precincts where Romney didn't get a single vote, and even though I don't think any of us here were voted, even voted for Romney, the no. fact that it looked like he was cheated was a really big deal because that may have brought Gary Johnson's numbers down. He was at 10% in Ohio oh, three or four weeks before the election, and he got 1%. Um, it's the same thing with this. I, I guarantee I could go to Cuyahoga Falls in these precincts right down the freeway from me and find people that would say that they voted for Romney in that precinct where he didn't get any votes at all. Oh, I yeah, definitely. That it, um, there needs to be some kind of a study. Um, maybe, and I, I mean, it's, it's hard for us to get people to come and listen to what we're saying even. But how we can get it out to enough people? Did you vote on Prop 37? 
uh, where is your, you know, where did you vote and maybe expose the fraud that way? Because I agree. I, I don't know. I, I wasn't getting any responses on my show from anyone telling me that they weren't going to vote for it. When this is yeah, it's... Have, go sorry, ahead. Uh, for you guys out there in California where that was actually on your ballot, you got to vote on that where me and Sam didn't, is how did they phrase it? Did you see anything suspicious about the way that they worded the proposition in the voting? Because usually they give you, what, like a paragraph or two explaining what it is. Well, no, it seemed pretty legit. I mean, uh, there, the No on 37 campaign tried saying that uh, uh, meat wouldn't be labeled, but that could be tacked on later on. I mean, it was for all, uh, most of all products. I didn't see any suspicious writing. They, they had a different, um, No on 37 had a lot of uh, disinformation, though. Um, that left pe they they had such a huge advertisement and had that doctor on Henry Miller who uh tried to tried to say that tobacco didn't uh cause cancer uh trying to say that GMOs didn't cause cancer so if you if you take a doctor on to try to say something like that before it's a huge disinformation campaign and they uh it went unrecovered because who all the people that saw this commercial thought this guy was a Stanford doctor. And took his word for it, and just probably, I mean, could have voted no. I'm, I'm not saying that happened, but that could have happened. Uh, it's you know, disinformation could be damaging, and, and uh, not not all the people that originally heard this huge campaign got to hear the rebuttal to that. Um, and you know, I, I think that could fall into it as well. But uh, there's definitely that all that whole talk of voting fraud, uh, which is a problem because uh, there's a lot of counties in California that use the electronic voting machines, so. They did not that use could, them in my county, which I, I yeah. was prepared to go in there and request a paper ballot. But I have a problem with this, which a lot of people who are of the same mindset of us, and I'll ask you guys about this too, um, are against the idea of IDs when you go to vote. And I personally am for having to show an ID when you vote. Because if I really wanted to, I work at a gas station overnight. I see all the people coming in for work in the morning. I could have sat there and asked every single person whether they were voting or not, gone to their precinct and voted in their place. Without an ID, one of them asked for one, would have gotten through just fine. It doesn't even say your age. It doesn't even have the person asking the question show that I'm 23 voting for a 60-year-old. And I think a lot of that is where you see the voter fraud, is people who are crazy Obamanites who are willing to do that and go vote in place of somewhere else, someone else. And I think we need IDs. What do you guys think about that? Oh, I Ohio started this thing where you could show uh, for because there's the poverty argument that some people don't have an ID, and they were allowing you to use gas and electric bills, which I personally would say no to. But if you don't, and I don't mean compromise like uh, Congress does, but I mean in, in a logistics term, I don't even so much have a problem with that if I absolutely had to bend to it. Well, but and this I idea would say, of have nothing. Well, look at it as the like if you if you have an ID, you're not bringing it in a, a gas bill. You're not bringing it in anything as long. And I just I think that you should have to show some level of proof that you either are the person who should be voting or in the least to get somebody's gas bill or the the bill for their or the the, the paperwork that they get monthly for the Obama card and EBT food stamps that at least you're, you had to have talked to that person. So even if you're not that person, at least you're probably going in there to vote for them for what they actually wanted, which isn't right, but it's, it's less fraudulent. And so are you saying that you're against having to show ID or are you for it? I'm very much for needing ID. I'm willing to bend to uh, utility bills, but this notion that you can just walk in, did you hear about the people being bussed in from Chicago to Wisconsin <laughs> and talking about needing to go back? And they, these idiots were in Chicago gear. They had Chicago bears on their fake nails. Yeah, those are called, uh, those are called whack, or, uh, fibs, by the way, if you guys aren't familiar. That happens a lot in Los Angeles as well, uh, not just Chicago. Uh, it happens a lot a lot over the country as well, the people being bussed in. They, uh, the churches will bus people in to go vote Democrat. Um, well, but, you guys, you guys yeah. realize, you guys realize when you're, uh, on welfare and unemployment when you're on uh, when you're on unemployment 
And um, there's certain unemployment contracts where it's like, if we offer you a job, you have to take that job. And you're on unemployment, so you have to take the job. Well, guess what your job is going to be today? Get on this bus and go vote for uh, Obama. Okay? That's your job today. Yeah, go, go vote for your Lord Savior, okay? Yeah. That's just great to hear. I didn't know that. Uh, that, that makes the day even worse. Yeah. Well, hey, Sam, how, how do you feel about the fact uh, when it comes to this whole secession issue that's been real big this past week and uh, it's like over 50 st all the 50 states now uh, – all reached uh, the two thousand, the twenty five thousand uh, pinnacle of success. Where now that petition is going to go before uh, somebody or Congress or Obama is going to look at it and be like, "Oh, okay." And uh, how do you feel about that in court? I mean, is it going to be a cold shoulder? I mean, you guys discuss that. I mean, okay. Well, go ahead. I'll let Sam talk about it first, unless you wanted me to go first. Oh, go ahead. Okay. Well, the whole. I, I definitely think it's going to be either a cold shoulder or, or an iron fist. Uh, it's sort of like when you bring um, a big issue to the Supreme Court. You're bringing it to a Supreme Court that's treasonous and that negates the Constitution day by day. So if you bring a legitimate uh, petition to a president uh, who's not going to like it, um, he hasn't been good about uh, you know, uh, executive action in the past. I mean, look what he did with California and the medical marijuana dispensaries. Uh, when we put I mean, he <laughs> really <laughs> actually, uh, yeah, really, you got cricketed. Oh, <laughs> oh no, man. I, was oh, no. You. I was, I was saying that is Obama's response. I apologize. Oh, okay, okay. all right. Well, that that makes Damn. sense. But court, that was cool. court, you're absolutely court, court, you're absolutely right. And uh, actually, Sam was, I, uh, I heard him talking about this in one of his reports uh, about the myths of secession. It's like. Uh, Sam, is the federal government going to be the ones to decide if the, if uh, a state can secede from the federal government? Like, hey, uh, we're the ones that are going to decide if you can go on your own. And it's like <laughs> their interpretation. It's like petitioning your parents to get off from grounding. Yeah, I think the, the, what we can hope <laughs> for the most is that they're not allowed to paint us as violent or racist. And when I say us, like I said, I have not signed Ohio's petition to secede. I'm actually going to have to read it because I heard Alex saying that we are seceding Alex to Jones. the union. And mm -hmm. I like that. I like the idea that all 50 states would secede and leave uh, D.C. by itself. To this day, I'm not sure if Alex wants you to sign your local state secession or wants you to sign the Declaration of Independence and post it symbolically. I'm not even sure what his idea was, but I like the idea of us saying we're not leaving the Union. We are recreating the Union. And leaving we're reclaiming it. <laughs> I like that idea. I haven't heard that, what you just said, Sam, about... Uh signing a petition for the Declaration of Independence. That, that, I like that a lot. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, re de if you reinstate the, the Bill of Rights and the Declaration of Independence, they don't have all this executive power over us anymore. And we can say, shove it up your ass. But are we going to get the military arm to go along with us? Uh, that That's up for debate. But it, it's definitely a tough battle. I mean, who's to say that... Uh, if a state really tries to secede, they're not going to treat us like a little Palestine, like I was saying earlier, or um, or use it as an excuse to uh, to impose martial law and, and really create, uh, test out their uh, FEMA region. You know what I'm saying? I think I think that if you had a state that had enough uh, industry power behind it, like if you had like Illinois or New York, which I mean, those are the two that it's never going to happen. But say you were to get New York. Or, or Chicago, uh, Illinois, to actually secede, you would have so much business representation behind them because businesses are still going to do business with Illinois and New York, whether they're part of the union or not. And by that sense, it would almost limit the government's ability to really do anything about it and encourage other states to join. What do you think about that? Well, I mean, that would be great. Uh, Not going to happen. <laughs> go ahead, Sam. Yeah. Sam, what do you think? Yeah. And, and I, think if, I think if one state could do it and people could 
see that there was enough unity that they were not allowing themselves to be imprisoned. I think other states would follow. I think whatever happens to that first state is going to be indicative of the whole thing. And I don't know that the government would necessarily come out full teeth because if they do, that might push states like Texas over. But I think things short of that will probably happen in quick succession. But I don't think they're going to, I mean, you know, send in planes and FEMA because if they do, they're <laughs> going to lose Texas, in my opinion. I don't yeah, think that, that's true. I don't think they could send in actual military. I think I, I think that the only way that you will ever see the military rebel against the federal government is in the case of them being asked to fire upon other uh, proverbially Americans, even even what, in the case it, of secession. That's true. I agree with that. It's sort of like, a, you, have you guys seen V for Vendetta? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah well, once they start shooting the little kids uh, and saying they're the law, that's when things start turning. I, I almost think that's the that's the way we could uh, unite and take things down peacefully. We don't. I mean, I'm for having uh, you know, I'm pro Second Amendment and all that. But if we were to all show up to the Capitol, every single person in a, in a costume, they they're not going to fire upon us in masses. That would cause a a, a complete revolution. I think. right. And uh, which is why I love that movie because something uh, like that could happen. We could we could make that happen. But not yeah. a, a lot of people are so asleep uh, with all these sports and entertainment. Twilight, that's over. But who knows if that's really over? It's like the zombie. It's going to come back in some fashion. Um, hey, and, you know, I'm, the, the vamp. I'm, don't be dissing Twilight, Court. Come on. I'm going to hey, I, I did that to jab at you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Easy now. Kyle and his girlfriend, they love watching those Twilight movies, right? And getting ready, getting ready to go to the movie theater and watch, watch some Twilight. And this is usually the time uh, in the. Pro program when we uh, start talking a, a little more personally and we start talking about entertainment news and st uh, other stuff like that. I mean, we cover a lot of serious issues, and if anything, this is our gallows. <laughs> this is our gallows humor uh, section of the program. And uh, <clears throat> hey, hey, Sam, what what do you like to do for fun? Uh, go to work and DJ at at the nightclub, or isn't that what you do? Or what's going on with that? Yeah, uh, that's actually a funny side story. Um, when I, gra I have a degree in interactive media technology and uh, audio production. Okay. I got out of school and started working at a music studio. They were keeping two of us. There were four of us, and I was hired number four. So that, that was going badly. And I was driving taxi, and this is the way our, our – this is why – just one, one of these personal note. One of the little things about just over-government – I got a speeding ticket and driving a cab. I've driven for like 10 years. The insurance dropped my insurance. I suddenly am not covered for anything. So I'm scrambling to get a job, and this is right when the 08 crash happened. So I quickly right. applied at a dancer club, in uh, a topless club where I work, and they needed somebody <laughs> who knew how to program this massive light board in this two-story club. And um, Ohio is in such a place where it's either you work at the strip club or you work uh, like telemarketing, you work in a factory, which things like this then become automatically uh, impossible and to I'll do. Vouch you're for doing... that because uh, I have a lot of family in Ohio, and there are a lot of strip clubs in Ohio. There are a ton of them. There are <laughs> an awful lot. And. Uh, I, I hopped on there. I make a decent amount of money. I pay my bills, and I, it, it is what it is. But I can tell you, um, about seventy percent of the music we play, and this is why I mentioned this whole story ties in. Some of the worst music ever made it comes to our <laughs> club: the Lady ah. Gaga, Rihanna, ah. Bieber, Ludacris. Oh my God! And it, it, uh, I'm sure. <laughs> Sam, Sam, that's what the girl. Sam, that's what the girls want to play. Now you have to play that 70 percent of music that you totally hate. Sometimes you probably hey, get some good no, classic rock we, or something, can... but you get to see titties all night. Isn't that correct? And that, and that is very, very true. And I, I, I have been lucky doesn't enough that as make, well. Doesn't that, that make? Doesn't they, that make the Lady Gaga slightly more bearable? 
It, it does, and they give me a, a rather long leash. So <laughs> if I get a really cool girl in there that wants to hear like uh, KMFDM or uh, something like that, oh yeah, they'll actually, and throw on decapitated it. or uh, cannibal corpse for them, scare them like that. <laughs> um, I I can I can do uh, if I do something like that, I have to uh, get on and off kidding. of it. But believe it or not, if I hype it right. They'll let me do it just because I've been there for four years and I've done okay. things like that all before. Well, hey, hey, Sam, you're you're on the media speaks today, and if uh, if you could uh, DJ this, uh, w what would you be playing right now? I mean, what do you like? Selena Gomez. Oh, probably Ministries NWO. <laughs> How do you guys other? Um, how do you, I never? I, I heard a little bit of that. How do you guys feel about that? His choices. I mean, give us some more, Sam. What do you got? Uh, let me think of something newer here. Um, I like uh, Muse's Uprising. Um, I, I love I love a lot of the older electronic stuff like Skinny Puppy. Um, Eon, <laughs> I'm a big fan. Of. I love Primus. Like Primus. Mindless, oh, Primus is awesome. Oh, there we go. Hey, Kyle, uh, Kyle and Court, uh, why don't you guys give a give a couple of musical uh, your your guys is uh, hey hey Shut DJ up. play. Hey DJ, play this song and let's see if Sam agrees with your choices. What do you guys? What's the song you guys want to hear? Court. Keep in uh, mind this is keep in mind this is topless dancer music. Okay, come on. Topless dancer. Uh, suicidal tendencies, subliminal. Uh, oh, that would be wonderful. Yes, I, yeah. I actually had a girl that was in love with How Will I Laugh Today. Yeah, How Will I Laugh Tomorrow. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I love, they're, they're one of my favorite. I'm into a lot of prog metal, though. I like a lot of uh, death metal as well. Um, probably one of my favorite bands in the world is, like, Opeth. Um, yeah, do you like Arch Enemy? I do like Arch Enemy, yes. Uh, the older stuff, but, yeah, I do like them. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of bands like that. Uh, probably a lot of bands a lot of people haven't heard of, unless they are into metal like uh, Sam there. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I do like Primus, so Primus is uh, awesome. I saw them play live, and I, I didn't even take anything, but I felt I was, like, hallucinating when I watched the play. <laughs> Kyle, I, what do you say? I got some really weird taste in music, I'm not going to lie. Uh, I'm a big uh, Ben Folds 5 fan. Um, I've obviously, <laughs> uh, when it comes to metal, my number one metal band is the Atlas Stone. You can check them out at theatlasstone.com. They are fantastic. They play epic metal, and they are good at it. Um, I listen to like They Might Be Giants. Uh, I'm a big yeah. classic rock fan. You, They Might Be Giants fan over there, Sam? Uh, uh, I love the the incandescent gas, the sun. Help me. Yeah, good song, good song. Um, I'm a big fan of uh, who else do I listen to a lot? I love Queen. If I if I honestly had to pick my two two favorite bands, it would probably be Queen and the Guess Who. Who I've seen the Guess Who twice live in concert, and Ben Fold once. Oh, that's cool. They Might Be Giants twice also. <clears throat> hey, I'm going to give a... Hey. Hey, if anybody has a chance, look up uh, Passing Time, the EP, The Alexandrian Solution. My band just released an EP under that name. Oh, okay. Oh, hey, cool. Pass. You're in a band as well? What's your band Yeah, I'm in Passing Time. Passing uh, you Time. Can, uh, if you got, the, the quickest way to find it on YouTube is to put in Passing Time, The Alexandrian Solution. Uh, you can find it <laughs> on social.com slash passing time. Yeah, we're getting, we're getting it up on screen. on screen on Reverb Nation right now. That's you? Uh, you know, I, th I don't know if I think that might be our older music. We haven't updated that in ages. Um, but I'm sure there's music on it. But I'm worried it's not the newer stuff. So our new stuff was actually done in a studio. That was recorded at home. Oh, uh, okay. Very cool, you got a reverb. Hey, right on, this. dude. Uh, yeah, for sure. Court, go ahead. What were you, you got some sound. I was just going to say, uh, I've been in a few bands myself. Uh, yeah. Maybe we could collaborate on something. Wink. <laughs> yeah, uh, hey, but we're, we're all into music. Isn't that right? Wink, wink, wink. Or... Yeah, I think we all have done <laughs> yeah. just a little bit of music. D Lake, I know you've done some rap stuff. I've played a few hey. of those. Top 100 uh, San Diego rap and hip hop. Do you like I've, press? I played a piano <laughs> and guitar in a few smaller shows and some open mics and stuff, but I've never gotten really too serious just for fun. Yeah, just for fun, right? But I mean, hey, we're climbing up the charts uh, just for fun, even right now on the Media Speaks. <laughs> Uh, and yeah, it seems like it's just for fun, but we're trying to get the word out. And I did a report this week all about how uh, 
the media speaks, Kyle Phillips, Anthony Court, and I, we're trying to team up and uh, align ourselves with other people that are trying to, uh, like Ron Paul said in his farewell speech, uh, change ourselves and uh, in, in the hope that others will emulate us and follow us in our fight for liberty and... Uh, for freedom! <laughs> for freedom in freedom. the United States of America. And uh, that's what we think it means to be American. And... Um, you know, I really am uh, kind of disagreeable to this uh, secession movement, which starts out as the WhiteHouse.gov opening a floodgate uh, to get people's names. And Kyle, you said you signed the petition. I'm a little concerned about that. Well, I mean, you see, <laughs> and that's the thing is I did for the point of sending the message that I'm somebody who is unhappy with the government, not because okay. I want to secede, because that's – that's a very unrealistic thing. It's never going to happen in our modern right. society. But it, it sends the right message. And like you say, a lot of people uh, pretty much being put on a list by signing this. <clears throat> this I mean, petition. yeah, maybe that's extreme, right? But I'm, well, I'm not no, trying to fear monger. I but. definitely no, no, think no, no, it's no. viable. It's, it's definitely a viable concern. And I would say that I would not ask my girlfriend to sign that list or my mom or other people that I know who aren't as politically involved. But let's be Oh, brave. for their protection. But you you feel as though you're being brave by being the one that puts his name on that well, list, right? And protect brave, your friends and family. I mean, I'm kind of at a point where, and I know you guys are similar with this. Uh, uh, we've had. I, I'm at I started, a breaking point. I started a <laughs> yes, website breaking. That, <laughs> well, and for it. We all can <laughs> for it. We've all made videos online speaking out against things that the government does. Um, I know you get a lot of views <laughs> on the correct views. We get a lot of views on the media <laughs> speaks. We are all part of an InfoWars reporter contest. We're all part of the fusion centers now. I'm sure we've all been to other events. I know uh, you went to that that uh, event where you met Alex Jones. I went to the NATO uh, protests where they were videotaping people, probably for later facial recognition. And I posted those videos online. So uh, I think we're all on lists already. Us four, that is. Um, yeah. I wouldn't <laughs> we're recommend, activists. Yeah, I wouldn't I mean, recommend people hey, close If to we're them. not on a list, we're not trying hard enough. <laughs> yeah. I, I know I I'm like, you, uh, local... couldn't, I try to do this quite frequently on my videos is make it very obvious that I'm not uh, I'm looking to attack anyone. I'm not looking to fight anyone. Uh, I'm not particularly, you know, I'm not walking around suicidal. A lot of times our lyrics are quote-unquote goth or whatever, but I'm not satanic. So if anything strange happens or I'm suddenly whisked away, it needs to be, it needs to be um, a red flag for someone. that You know, I said Sam didn't just snap one day. And I've already <laughs> preempted them on this uh, from the moment I started the show. Hey Sam, Sam, when you when uh, sometimes you get a little carried away and start knocking over the plants in your studio there, and uh, <laughs> I saw I saw one of your more recent videos where uh, your three point lighting, one of your lamps went out, and you had uh, your girlfriend said it was uh, looked a little kind of macabre in there, but I actually kind of appreciated that macabre look, uh, considering what you were talking about. And uh, can you tell us a little bit more about that report you just put out recently this week? She said it was the uh, the spooky show. I'm, I'm quickly zipping into my account of the, I don't know which was what were was was some of the topics on that one. Um, I know for sure it was I, the thing uh, was one of them. It that, was like three um, days ago. I don't know. I watched the earlier today. Over there, want to destroy the thing. Um, now, yeah, destroying the Sphinx. Uh, what's up with that? And earlier uh, last year, or uh, excuse me, earlier this year, they were talking about destroying the pyramids as well. And like, what's up with that uh, Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt? They just want to destroy all the most sacred uh, synagogues or whatever well, you call it. Yeah, that's that's sort of how uh, Hitler affected Egypt. Look, he blew the nose off the Sphinx. I mean, the, the the Nazis pretty much tore it up. I mean, it's almost the same thing, if you ask me. But go ahead, Sam. Sorry. Oh, no, no. The one thing I try to underline right. to right. everyone is when I was growing up, I remember that every everybody I talked to was um, a Zionist. And now everyone seems to be going anti-Zionist. And I'm trying to stay, um, I'm probably more in the middle than most people I know, where I try to go back to the point of, when the Jews kill the Palestinians, I try to remind the Jews, you know, when the Germans were killing you, they were killing their own 
people. They were German. When he killed the Palestinians, this didn't this split didn't happen till Cain and Abel, which was a long time before you were one people. You are killing your own people, and I'm, I, 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 I would like to tell the Palestinians the same thing if I could. This is like me killing Kyle in another state because he's in he's in another state. He's an American. I'm killing my own people here. If you look at it like it was America, and that you feel that that's a uh, correct view, like a child could figure out. But I mean, Court, what are, what are your feelings about what Sam just was saying? Well, he's right. Uh, he's definitely right. Um, you think about it like that; they are killing their own people, and it's such a small piece of land. That would be like if I was to uh, start shooting bombs in the, uh, if Fresno started shooting bombs in the, uh, Madera, where I live right here right now. There's such it's such a small area. Mm -hmm. It affects so many people, so many kids, and they try to hide the hide behind the fact that, like, oh, well, they're putting the kids there, and it's such a it's a crack of shit. And they're, they're you know, both sides, both sides hold responsibility. I, I completely agree with that. And I, I'll come out right now. Um, I have family over in in Israel that are Palestinian, and they're not Muslim. They don't want part of this. Violence. They don't want to be part of this religious extremism. It's just like you said. Like if it were here, we're not bombing the next city over. That's more Palestinian or more Jewish or more Muslim or, or more whatever. We get along, and they should be able to do that there. I mean, that's what my family members want. And that's what a lot of people there want. They don't want all this uh, nonsense. Let me, let me ask the question. Uh, I'll I'll ask Court and then Sam and D like to answer this uh, in that order. What do you think is the cause of this violence, and what's the cause of just general extremism and war all over the world? Because it, it, it always seems to be stemmed around religion. But Court made a good point earlier that there's Muslims and Jews and Christians and Mormons and atheists in the United States, and we all seem to get along just fine. So I don't think that it's that, but what is it? What causes this, this hatred of other people? Well, it, it goes so far back. It's such an ancient thing. Um, and my personal belief is with the, we basically, uh, the globalists took, it, they took Palestine and said they wanted a place to give it to the Jews. And I'm for uh, the Jews having a homeland, but they essentially uh, took a nation. That's It's sort of like the U.S. We came here and we took this land away from the Native Americans and we call it something else. And we put them in these certain areas, but we're, I mean, we're not bombing them now, but if we, we sort of reverse time a little bit, there were, there were battles, there were fights, there were fights between the Apaches, Geronimo. I sort of think it goes, it goes, it goes along with that, but with that deep religious tie, uh, they created this, uh, religious extremism, just like we created Al Qaeda. They, they gave Hamas the political power they wanted so that they can create a target. Uh, and they could validate this violence, in my opinion. And all this violence is, is just retaliation. It's eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. And I put myself in the shoes. If I was sitting in my apartment and I had a kid and I, a bomb went through my, my, my roof, my kid died, it would be really hard for me to not retaliate, let me tell you. And I'm not a, I'm not a violent person, but it, 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 I, it, it's a tough situation. You know, it, it's really hard to... It's really hard to to break into you. Right, Court, we're getting a little echo there from your end. I don't know if, that, if someone has their speakers on, but uh, uh, Sam, why don't you go ahead next? I think the cause of it is bad leadership. And by that I mean all it takes is one leader to become us versus them in their mentality. And it all falls apart. Like he mentioned the Indians. If the Indians had not been fighting among themselves, they would have been able to have won that war without any problem whatsoever. There would have been a swarm of Indians so big that they would have thought we had the Great Red Wall. But that didn't happen because the Indians were fighting amongst themselves so badly that we mowed them right over. And that is exactly what's happening, I think, anytime you have bad leadership in government that doesn't have enough sense to realize 
I don't mean who their own people are, because ultimately I don't mean this in a new world order sort of way. But we are one people, which is, of course, the ultimate lesson of life, I think. But, I mean, in terms of at least countries and uh, cultures, we're too divisive within our own cultures. And I think that is why the Bible warned in old days about mixing other cultures, is you start mixing leaders, and sooner or later you're going to get bad leaders, and then everyone's fighting. Exactly. You're completely right about it being bad leadership. And if one side were to just sit back and maybe pull, I, I hate to pull a religious figure into this, and be like, kind of like Gandhi and just say, hey, look what they're doing to us. It's a slaughter. Maybe, maybe uh, the world would uh, be more likely to back them up and, and uh, exploit them, you know. But either side isn't willing to do that. It's definitely a, a poor leadership. I remember, and I, I, I think the, or what, maybe one of the worst political figures ever is the, the Clinton, anybody in the Clinton family. But I do remember <laughs> thinking that he was very, very good. And I, he, who, who, who knows what, let me, I can't read, oh, now I see it. Um, I, who knows what stage. But perhaps the only fond memory of the Clinton years was when he, he appeared to be able to get both sides to speak somewhat civilly. I like when there were so many meetings that the bombings went down. And he was mm -hmm. very good at getting them to slow the bombing down. And I remember thinking, well, at least maybe Hillary will have that one good Clinton trait. <laughs> and she, it's nowhere to be found in her. The only good thing that Bill was ever somewhat good at, she doesn't do at all. She's terrible. Hillary Clinton, the Secretary of State under the Obama administration, who uh, went to Libya. Uh, we came, we saw, you died, you know, she laughs. Look, uh, look everyone at the thinks way that's she funny. handles crises. And the oh, yeah, and Benghazi. The I mean, he did, you wouldn't even know. I mean, she she doesn't even have his ability to speak. There's nothing there. How, yeah, how do you feel about <laughs> how do you feel about the sons of politicians like uh, Bush Jr. or the uh, wives of politicians like Hillary or just uh, Jesse Jackson hey, Jr. Yeah, Jesse Jackson Jr. who's in some kind of uh, mental deficiency rehab center for being a Looney Tune. Uh, <laughs> And uh, how do you feel about He wants it? disability. Those yeah. are my politicians. <laughs> I mean, Who runs my state? He, 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 he got himself disability. <laughs> yeah. how, how would you feel if my kid had uh, 25 million hits on YouTube? I mean, come on. What the hell? How do these, how, how do these children's and relations of politicians get free passes into politics? And, like, Hillary Clinton, she's that, like, lesbian chick with the hairy armpits at the Freedom <laughs> Rally, right? Or some bull crap like that. I mean, and she's running around with all her uh, bad, uh, really awkward facial expressions that scare the hell out of me. But, I mean... Uh, she shows that Bill was simply a good speaker. And you get to see what the Clintons really are when they're not able to speak when you see Hillary. Yeah, well, just sort of like Obama without his teleprompter, you know, just like da 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 da. And our, our, our founding fathers, our founding fathers were uh, known for their oratory skills, and also most of the early ones were generals and lawyers. And uh, Obama presents himself as some kind of constitutional lawyer, expert, scholar, and all this stuff, but we can't see the records, and we're just supposed to swallow and believe that part of the story. Well, he's the type of constitutional lawyer that, that that's against the constitution the, the type that goes against it uh yeah. you you know I it's sort of like in ways to subvert it yeah exactly and i hate to bring this up now but i'm actually having uh, i might have to duck out soon but it's been a, a pleasure oh, okay. being part of the show um anthony court everybody <laughs> yeah court we've gone an hour and how, how do you feel the show went and uh why don't you address uh, Sam there, who joined us on the show, and uh, that'd be a great way, great way for you to wrap up. You had a lot of great commentary today, and uh, thanks for being on. We hope you have a great uh, afternoon with your family and, and friends. And uh, Court, why don't you take 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 yourself out there? 
Great. Yeah, we, it's been a, a pleasure to have you on the show, Sam, and we hope to have you on in the future. Um, this is definitely a good opportunity for the Correct Views, the media speaks, uh, to get the word out there. Um, you got a lot of great points. Uh, we, there's a lot of bad leadership, and I think we are all failing as citizens to point this out. I mean, it, we're all, we're all uh, overwhelmed by this, uh, you know, by all these things happening in our own lives, but we need to bring back patriotism. We need to bring back people researching things. We need to bring back the people. We need to de-zombify the people. And I think together we can help do that. And I, that's the essence of what we're all doing here, I, I, I personally think. And I, I think we're all doing a good job. And I think if we all stick together and keep putting out reports, putting out the knowledge, uh, that that'll uh, be more likely to happen it, and at least spread the knowledge because um, knowledge is power. And uh, I appreciate the opportunity of being on the show weekly and uh, working out with you guys. We all met through, uh, we were all passionate during the InfoWars uh, reporter contest that brought us together. And uh, that's why uh, I reached out to Kyle and why we were together and why we reached out to you, D-Lake, and why we're doing this. And I, I just think we should all get energized and keep pushing out the information about these corrupt scum that control our government. So, thanks. Uh, thanks, I'm going to sign out. All you do, man. Well, thank you very much, and I thank you. Uh, actually, Sam, I, I watched a couple of your uh, rants. You're you're very good, and uh, I, I actually liked uh, that you uh, are joining us on the show uh, more recently. I'm probably going to get a webcam if this is going to be a regular thing because I like being on. Thank you very much. Well, yeah, you de you definitely had a lot of good commentary, a lot of good points. Uh, like you said, the failed leadership. Uh, we should be more diplomatic when it comes to Palestinians and Israelis attacking each other. Um, but I also think it's something that we could learn uh, because people like Susan Rice are defending their actions because if that sort of thing were to happen in the United States, you bet your ass they'd be defending the, the strikes uh, on the people that were, were uh, they were going against. Uh, but that's that's my opinion there. Um, I'll, leave out on, I'll, I'll leave on that note, but thanks for having me on. I'm signing out uh, for Anthony Court here. All right, Anthony Court, The Court Report, TheMediaSpeaks.com. It was great having you on the show, and uh, we love hearing from you, dude. And uh, you can find him on YouTube, uh, Constant Injustice. Yep. Yeah, yep. and make sure to subscribe to all of our channels. Thank you very much. Yeah, follow us on Twitter. Find us on Facebook. Thanks a lot, Court. Thanks, Court. All we'll, right. see you. we'll talk to you later. All right, bye. Peace. I'm booting him. Yeah, get out of here, pal. <laughs> Do I also want to block the user? That's funny. No, I don't want to oh. block him. <laughs> oh, you're like, get out of here. Do you want to block him from the future? Hey. Right, we're done with you, Court. Well, uh, but uh, just about blocking and inviting and joining and doing a Google Hangout, I just saw the other day on uh, one of my other uh, accounts that, uh, what's that guy's name? The uh, Virgin Records guy, billionaire guy, uh. Oh, the British guy or whatever with uh, the, the Virgin British? Records pre a CEO guy. Oh, I, he's kind of got a beard and long hair. Yeah, K he's, he's the Virgin K everything, uh, Virgin Mobile, Virgin Airlines. Yeah, that guy. Well, yeah, I mean, he was doing a Google Hangout with uh, his buddies. It was like the business talk hour, and uh, you know, they 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 were doing a Google Hangout. And uh, when the Google Hangout shows up on YouTube, ladies and gentlemen, there's no view count. And if, if the Virgin Records billionaire guy is doing a hangout and Delay for Prez, uh, the correct views, and the media speaks are doing a hangout, it's kind of like we're all on a level playing field, and I think that's wicked awesome. And how, the, how, how do you two guys feel about that? Will I take a little break? Why don't you guys discuss that? And if you can look up or remember that guy's name, that'd be Richard great. Richard Branson. Was... Oh, Richard Branson? Richard Yeah, Branson. that's it. That guy. That's what I was talking about. Yeah. And, uh... I don't, look up on Google. He just did a hangout. He's doing business uh, business guy talk uh, hangouts now, and we're doing uh, news and information and entertainment uh, hangouts that are. Uh, I mean, we're on a level playing field. How do you guys feel about that? See, I think that's awesome, and I, I agree with you completely. Yeah. Because up until this point uh, in time, you had two options. You could do. Uh, you could not be live on the internet. You well, three options. I should say. You could not be live on the internet. Not on the internet at all. You could be on the internet in pre-recorded formats, or you could pay a crap load of money to be online live. Up until this point, the best you could get would be to be on an outlet like blogtalkradio.com, which is like $60 a month, and it's only audio. There was 
I mean, maybe Ustream, but Ustream uh, has very limited monetization options, and not that many people use it. But the the Google Hangouts really has leveled the playing field. Like people like Richard Branson are doing it, just like Gary Johnson, just like us, and we all have the same abilities uh, for the most part, except for added things like the soundboard and stuff that I I do. But I think that it's a really good thing, and I, I will say that I'm apprehensive about Google, but at the same time, Google has given us so many abilities that we never had before. Uh, how do you feel about that, Sam, and, and even about Google specifically, because they're the ones who really provide all of these services that we use? If Google is looking to spy on us, I think they've already gotten most of the information we need they need by the time most people have already figured it out. We had a little pirate radio station in Canton, Ohio, and I used to run a uh, electronic metal based music show on it and I would it, it was all fiction. I was supposed to be a doctor that worked in a loony bin. it was a, it was a long story, but it was this <laughs> radio show. And occasionally things would come up of a political nature in the city, of people not paying tickets or whatever. And I would always encourage people not to pay the tickets in droves because the paper was telling you that they don't have anywhere to put these people. They're telling you that you already won. And I used to go on rants like that. So I knew that I was on a list probably long before I did the show. And then um, shortly after that, 9-11 happened. So then I knew, without a shadow of a doubt, there's this guy running crazy electronic music on a pirated radio station encouraging people not to pay tickets. So in light of all that, you might as well use what Google has to offer. Because like you mentioned earlier, they know exactly who we are. From here, it's just a matter of us finding a way to advertise so that, you know, a hundred views isn't something celebrated. It's, it's something that we're like, oh, man, we only got a hundred. Yeah. Trying to find a way to reach more people, and that, I think, is both inspiring and frustrating. Use, using the grid against them. I'm sorry, I'm gonna, I gotta run and go to the bathroom really quick, but you guys can keep going. All right, for sure, man. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for letting me take a break there. And, uh, hey, uh, Sam, man, I really appreciate you being on the show, and uh, uh, I like all your videos, man. Good stuff. And uh, Thank actually, you. I, I, I like I said, I, I, if this is going to be a a regular thing, I'm likely going to go and pick up a webcam. I, I live off of vitamin C supplements. I don't know how I got sick, but I've managed to do so. I'm miserable, but yeah. um, I, I I I could not wait to be on it. And I'm glad that I'm on it now. <clears throat> but if this is going to be a regular thing, I think I'm going to get a webcam. Yeah, if we get you on again, you definitely got to get a webcam. I got mine for like, I don't know, 30 bucks at Target. You know, it was a good deal. And uh, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I don't want to turn this to, into a Target commercial. But uh, I can tell you one thing and uh, can tell if we have any viewers. Uh, another thing is that uh, I, I prefer Target way more than Walmart. And oh do, yeah. Do you have any feelings or opinions about Walmart? And I is there a Walmart near you? I don't videos where I'm wearing my Walmart shirt. Um, I know I did a Walmart video a couple weeks ago. <laughs> I want to encourage everybody to do something. Um, yeah. There's a strike coming up on Black Friday, and their employees are demanding more money. And some people are going to say that that's what Kill Host is, and that's not what Kill Host is. Right. Twinkies. <laughs> Again. Bad union leadership kill hostess, not union leadership. Uh -huh. um, what, anyway, what they did is that they're trying to not show up for work at all on Black Friday mm -hmm. and show that they're, they're not getting unfair treatment as workers and they're asking people not to shop there Black Friday. Mm -hmm. I have another idea. I would like everybody who is going to be near a Walmart Say, say you drive by a Walmart on the way to work. Add a half hour uh, of your life to help the, the striking Walmart employees. Go into work a half hour early so you can swing by this Walmart. Mm -hmm. Grab a pack of them and find whatever employee is there and ask them questions to tie them up about yeah. what's on sale or ask where... Uh, 
uh, sundresses <laughs> are, or something they're not going to have. Stand in line with a pack of gum, and then before you get to the line, put the gum back and leave. Oh. Tie the store up, make it a huge Black Friday, since there isn't going to be anybody there to take care of all these people. Just make don't Walmart miss their employees, and maybe just, they'll be a little nicer to them. Just don't trample anybody, and don't be a wild maniac on Black Friday. But, Sam, I really like your ideas, and in fact, uh, when I was watching that uh, one video, I was uh, taking taking some of your ideas uh, to to heart. There, uh, you you were talking in one of your latest reports about uh, meatless Mondays and uh, going to Ralph's. And if you can see here, I have a uh, Ralph's rewards card. I am a Ralph's member, although I did it without inputting any of my data, and I still get the discount. Pretty smart, right? And uh, I, I I got this coupon last night when I ordered a sub sub sandwich with oh, uh, yes. with sausage and pepperoni and roast beef and cheese and it and I only ate half. I'm gonna reheat the other half uh, after the show. It was effing delicious. Uh, I had to wait a couple extra minutes. You know, it took a little while because uh, they were making sure it was super fresh and awesome. So they gave me a uh, two dollars next time I come off. Uh, two dollars off next time I come back to their restaurant, and uh, I think that's great. And I also have a camera here, Sam. Oh I have, yes. I have my Ralph's card here, so uh, next Monday on this vegan garbage meatless Monday crap, yeah, I'm gonna send you a picture of me eating a big giant steak. And uh, and, and and didn't you say if uh, anyone sends you a picture that you'll promote their favorite charity for a week on your show? That the sound you hear is me minimizing mad windows and opening up a text tab to write this down. Yes. Yeah, I'm going to send you a picture of me eating a, a big steak on a Monday, and you're going to promote my favorite charity for a week. Well, my favorite charity is the media speaks, pal. We need some money. We need some money to fund this operation, and uh, I'll we'll set up need... a donate page. <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, Kyle, can we set up a uh, eat eat me? Uh, can we set up a a picture submission page where people send us their pictures and we post them online uh, of me and Sam eating steak on uh, this coming Monday. And if you want to eat some uh, bacon or builder breakfast or a piece of a nice piece of steak from your local grocer uh, on Monday, and and tell these uh, vegan meatless Monday people that they can just forget about it because we're gonna eat meat like some. Healthy carnivores, right? You know what? Maybe, maybe on Monday, just for that, I'll make a bacon weave. You guys ever have a bacon weave? I think I've told you about one, D. Lake. Ooh, made one. that sounds delicious. A bacon weave. You take a pound of bacon and you weave it out into like a square, and then you uh -huh. take a pound of Italian sausage and Ooh. spread it out over it, and then a pound of pre-cooked mm. bacon, crumple it up, sprinkle it in there, and you roll it into a log that's like that big around, <laughs> about that long, and you smother it in barbecue sauce, and then you, you uh, smoke it. I got an idea. Uh, he has given me a wonderful idea. <clears throat> the media speaks, uh, all of us, should go ahead and try to get nothing but meat products and get people to donate it to the media speak or the correct views, and I'll get it to you guys. And we'll see how much meat-based products we can get for the hunger task force between now and the week of Christmas. Hunger uh, task force? Like Vienna sausages, um, anybody that wants to donate, like turkey, any, we, we will have a, a, a meat drive. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, we're, to to feed the to feed the homeless and uh, people that don't have food for Thanksgiving and Christmas and yeah, the holidays. Yeah, the hunger task force on here. I don't know if it has a different name there, but we 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 should we should try to. Uh, now we're gonna well, maybe we should do organic meat so the people don't say look uh, at those sellouts. You know they they, they don't they're, they're they're promoting steroid meat or something. Yeah, oh, I'm kind of greedy. I was just trying to feed fun. myself, but. <laughs> no, that's not a bad idea, though. We could get some stuff and maybe have uh, be great. Try and get people to send stuff to because I I don't know. Promote it every Monday <laughs> and see if we can get some stuff sent to a good charity. Which that that brings me to my next question. You say that anybody who sends you a picture, you're going to promote their favorite charity. What if their favorite yeah, charity is Acorn? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey Sam, what if uh, someone sends you a picture of them eating meat on a Monday, but their favorite charity is something like Acorn? Will, will you promote that for a week? 
What, what, I'm afraid. What is Acorn? I'm afraid to ask. Acorn is like they're a they're a non for profit group that's mainly based in Chicago. They're the ones who have been like consistently found of uh, voter fraud and intimidating. People it's like uh, candidates. It's Obama's uh, a part of it. It's Obama's uh, mini mafia <laughs> in uh, Illinois. There, right, Kyle? Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. You know, I, I, I'm sure that I could find some way in which to do that and still keep my promise, such as a person would like to support Acorn as their favorite charity. And um, the reason is because Acorn has brought us Obama for four more years. You get to enjoy President Obama for four more years because of Acorn and this man here. And then I would just go on. <laughs> hey, hey, Sam, what do you think the next four more years of Obama means for marijuana? Do you have any opinions about that? I I think he's probably going to pretty to try to keep the, the the status quo in general. I think he's going to definitely go against states' rights on it. And uh, I don't think he's going to be any kinder towards it than Romney would have been either. I think you're still going to have issues where the states and the federal government are butting heads on this. And uh, more importantly, the voters and their government. And I, well, I, if, Col I, I if Colorado, if Colo I'm sorry, if Colorado and Washington uh, legalize recreational use of marijuana, but then uh, the federal government says, sorry, there's nothing we can do because uh, we can't stop the Justice Department from launching their federal raids. And uh, uh, apparently the federal law on marijuana trumps the state's uh, vote. Is that, okay. is I, that? Be, Before you comment on that, I just want to mention that you guys are probably going to get my apartment raided. And I can't say too much on this right now. Uh, <laughs> But I can maybe talk to you guys in private about it. But uh, I have actually had threats made against the website by uh, uh, employees. Uh, I won't say specifically who, but professors from the uh, university, Northern Illinois University, which is in DeKalb, the same town that I live, uh, threatening to tell the police that we are supporters and advocates of marijuana legalization. <laughs> oh man, is this a banned topic from the show now, or what oh, the f? Absolutely I, I... not. Absolutely not. <laughs> Just be aware that that threat has been made against us. <laughs> all right. Well, hey, all you goons, uh, do not raid uh, his place. Okay, come well, on. The funny thing is, the threat that was made. It's like I know all the police in town, and they're all very, very uh, aware of the fact that I run a website with you guys, and that. We are very much supporters of marijuana being legalized, but a threat was made about reporting us to authorities for supporting yeah. marijuana legalization by a professor. I, I can't stress this enough. Um, I have DJed Ray. I DJ in an adult club. I've been in bands since the early 90s. I've gone to clubs everywhere. I have been to mosh pits in uh, ministry concerts at the Palladium in the 90s. I have never once seen a marijuana-based altercation at an event. Not once. <laughs> I know, never. because, I mean... And you're a nonviolent guy, Sam. Is that right? I mean, you're you 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 do not advocate violence in any way, do you? No, absolutely not. I uh, I have, was lucky enough, and I'm not that good at it. I was lucky enough to take Hoshin Soul from Master Rick Blackwell for about a year and a half here, and I, I I'm all in favor of self defense. But yeah, I don't think violence is needed for anything. I'm always instructing people. They say that we have ridiculous laws regarding. Uh, marijuana and I've said forever it, it, for instance what well, is use marijuana you could use it with uh, <laughs> traffic violations you can use it with anything mm -hmm. if it's we all simply, the police. if we all simply quit paying the fine all at one time and again mm -hmm. how do you advertise something if we could get 50,000 people in the state to promise not to pay any fines regarding marijuana Regardless of what, not not mm -hmm. to go to court, not to do anything. 
they're going to arrest the first wave of people, but in time, you're going to run out of, uh, uh, you're going to run out of DJs, custodians, yeah, that's, that's how they shut down, that's how they shut doctors. down, uh, that's how they shut down the, uh, street cameras, like the, uh, give you a ticket, uh, from a street camera, because so many people weren't paying it, like in Southern California, but, Kyle, uh, I had a feeling you were going to interject something right there. What, what were you going to say? No, I was just kind of thinking there as you said that if we were to orchestrate something like that, there's two possibilities of what would come out of that. One, mm -hmm. they wouldn't be able to uh, sustain all the arrests that they'd have to be making. And, yes, there'd be a first wave, but after that, they'd pretty much have to give up because you can't arrest, what, 30% of the population yeah. either uses marijuana or knows somebody who uses marijuana or well, well, is around people who use marijuana. Excuse so, me, but the last time I saw a statistic, uh, the, uh, the, the amount of people that were in uh, federal federalized prison system for nonviolent drug crimes was equivalent to the population of the state of Maine. Like, an entire state in our union is in prison for nonviolent drug crimes. Uh, primarily, I mean, like, more than 85% of, of those, quote, drug crimes are marijuana-related. Like, not the, the other stuff. Yeah, the, worst th the worst thing we could do is get violent. Because what does everyone mm. say about drugs? That they lead to violence. What does everyone say about pot? Pothead. Well, they're lazy. Well, we'll show you how lazy we are. We won't get off our ass and go to court. We won't get off our ass and get the money order for your ticket. As a matter of fact, we're going to show you just how lazy we are, and there's 20,000 of us doing it. We don't need to fight anybody. Mm. Yo, so you're saying if, if a collective of twenty to 25,000 people, kind of like a petition at the whitehouse.gov, uh, said, we're not going to pay these tickets, and uh, we'll show you just how lazy we are. Well, you need, yeah, I mean, you need it to be a number with your of marijuana. people in one city. Like that, no, that number might be big where I'm at, because there's like 80,000 people in Star County. But that number would be an abysmal failure where you are. I mean, you'd need to get a large collective of people to simply say, I'm not doing it. Well, uh, if you, you know had what? a collective of people that said that they were not going to pay speeding tickets. Well, I wish... Uh... That, uh, you know, this this baloney about giving you a ticket for going 10 miles an hour over the speed limit yeah. in the middle of the night when nothing's open... Garbage. Which I yeah. see all the time working at a gas station. I get see people get pulled over for stupid reasons. In fact, I had a little bit of a problem with uh, the town police department a while back, which I will say they have a new chief now who just immigrated over from Crystal Lakes Department, which is a few hours away. And ever since that happened, their, their attitude, their conduct, in, in my experience, has gotten a million times better. So I'm not ragging on the DeKalb PD right now, but I did have an issue with them where they wanted to sit in my parking lot and radar people on the third third shift, oh. and they would just sit there and wait for people to come by, and I called them. I called the department. I was very polite. I was very nice, and I told them, I was like, hey, you know, there's other parking lots. There's a parking lot of a, of a out-of-business restaurant right next door and of a... Uh, a rental company, somebody, it's like a landlord company that owns a lot of properties in this area across the street that's closed overnight. I said, why do you have to sit in the one open business on the street corner? Why can't you sit in any of the multiple closed parking lots where it's not going to be deterring business and keeping people from coming into the store? And the reason I called was, yes, I was angry about it, but I had customers complaining too. And I actually had a lieutenant of the department come in and Pardon my language, I have no other way to really describe it. He came in and bitched me out. <laughs> For me. We will sometimes sit in our parking lot and, or right across, because believe it or not, there's a mall area here and there's a friendly restaurant across the street, and then ours is like a bricked in area and it's a two story building. Um, the cop will sit in the closed friendly. And our business will drop to nothing. And we've had managers say, look, the amount of fights that we have here are maybe one or two every five or six months. It's not that it's not a club where people <clears throat> really fight very much. Well, that's really low for a strip club, let's be real. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it comes up like you would expect, but it's a, lot, a lot, much less than you would expect, especially for as hood as this area is, unfortunately. 
but um, they, they, we're like, you know, to, how would this area benefit from our business leaving? Drinks are like $7 for a shot of uh, 151 which probably isn't a lot in California, but it's a little steep here. That's um, Yeah, and um, it, it's, it's a place that generates, I'm sure, a lot of money for the area that it's in. And everything is closing here. We have a vacuum cleaner shop named Hoover. If anybody ever buys a Hoover vacuum cleaner that isn't used, by that I mean the money doesn't go back to Hoover, then you might as well just burn the, you know, burn the country down. They killed my area. They moved our jobs to Mexico, like, you know, the same, everybody else is song and dance. And there's nothing here really paying taxes. You have a two-story club that is able to make money and not really bringing a lot of grief to anybody. When we do have a fight, somebody gets a black eye or a busted lip. Um, but for the really most part, that people... It's important that you shut us down for what? Where's the benefit just... here? There's no benefit. People just want to come in. They want to chill out. They want to pay seven dollars a drink. See listen, listen to uh, uh, Sam DJ there and see some titties. I mean, that's what it's all about. And you know, maybe you get it going to the VIP room. No, I mean, but, but, but yeah, that's but my, my point is they're looking for uh, a, a couple thousand dollar DUI yeah. when they're yeah. if they continue sitting there, they're going to drive people away from the business. And instead, yeah, can you just couple, park down the fucking? Uh, can you park down the street a little bit and not directly yeah. in front of this? Yeah, uh, directly in front of the clubs, please. Your business maybe two, three thousand dollars, and the people who aren't gonna stop there seeing the cops sitting there for their thousand dollars off one. Well, I've the I've previously the called out the cops, and I think that the police departments in this country need to uh they need someone to, uh come in and get them in a. Sh Tip top, uh, spick and span shape because the way that they're operating right so now hard. is pitiful. Well, can I just say on that because you just made a really good point, and there's something that I wasn't going to talk about on the website, but since you said that, I really feel the need to. Is here in in DeKalb, we have two police departments. We have the DeKalb Police and we have NIU Police because NIU, uh, Northern Illinois University, takes up a big portion of our town. And they're having a lot of issues right now at NIU with corruption. I don't know if anybody that far away where you guys are have heard about the coffee fund, but pretty much there are a ton of employees and managerial positions who are stealing money in different ways from the school and putting it into a private fund that was in no way connected. And we have issues with corruption with the police and stuff too. And if there's one person in the police department at NIU, well, specifically between the two departments, I have a lot more respect for NIU PD than DeKalb. DeKalb's getting better. But NIU police are awesome. They have this mentality of we're, we don't want people to be scared of us. We don't want people to be scared to come to us for help. We want to help people. If you come to us, if we see you while we're driving down the road and you're walking down the side of the street wasted, can barely stand, we're not going to take you to the department. We're going to take you home so that you're safe and you get into your bed fine. And that's kind of their mentality, which I think is great. And I give 100% credit for that mentality to Chief Grady. Chief Grady of the NIU police, in my experience, I haven't met the man personally, but in my experience, he runs the department fantastically. That's his entire philosophy. Well, isn't that the way it should be, Kyle, that you Absolutely. know the guy's name and you know that he's doing a great <laughs> job and uh, you know that things are running smoothly and, and there's and not... His his police, when I, I will say that to Cal PD, which they've gotten better about it recently, but back, you know, a year or so ago, they would come into my parking lot and just sit there and radar people to where NIU police, they come in, they get a cup of coffee, they ask how I'm doing, hey, how's the night going, have you had any issues? They'd sit around, drink the cup of coffee for a little bit, talk to me, see what's going on, ask if I need help with anything, and then they'd be on their way. I've had nothing but positive experiences with NIU police, and I give credit for that to Chief Grady. And Chief Grady is being fired right now. He's being fired over a bullshit incident that really has nothing to do with him, where they're trying to say that NIU police covered up evidence in a rape case, which the evidence that was covered up was accidentally misfiled in the wrong place and would have had no grounds within the trial at all. It was two uh, testimonies by two people who were friends with the rape victim, but... Um, 
all the evidence was already there. It was a set in stone case. There was, even though they should have had this information in the case, it should have been given to the prosecutors. It it wouldn't have helped because the case was so rock solid already. So, Dude, can you yeah, write an article about that? That that all sounds intriguing and really I'm, great information. I've been, I mean, I've been kind of scared too because I know a lot of things that I shouldn't know and I can't say wow. that I know them. But uh, I I might do that. And pretty much one lieutenant made one small mistake, and so now they're firing him and they're trying to fire Chief Grady, which I don't think wow. Chief Grady really had anything to do with this. And to give you some background on Chief Grady, well. He's 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 written two books. One of them, it's like the injustice of justice, and then the just us in there is highlighted. When oh. he's talking about these problems, he was, I don't know if you guys heard about a few years ago, there was a school shooting at NIU, and Chief Grady was the first man in the door to take the shooter out. He also has spent a lot of time in the Middle East helping them establish their own police so that we can get our troops out of there. He's, in my opinion, he's a great leader, he's a great guy, and he doesn't deserve the, the bullshit that he's going through right now. And there, I said it, it's out there. <laughs> okay, well, that's a really great, uh, interesting local story, and I'm glad that you're following that and uh, that you had that to say and report about it. I mean, uh, uh, in my local community, I know downtown, I mean, it's like there's certain areas of town where, I mean, that is a, a tougher job position than in other parts of town. Uh, I know I've talked to some people that are actually not police, but like contractors for certain designated areas and facilities. And, uh, you know, we have like a trolley system here and stuff like that. But uh, those guys do a really great job. And uh, for my daily uh, moving around and stuff uh, in town and public transit and stuff and uh, local peace officers that come into like, I'm in the my local stores all the time, and I see them in there, and uh, they all seem like pretty good guys yeah. for the most part, you know. And that's something that I always tell people who get mad when they have an asshole incident with a cop or whatever is that uh, cops aren't assholes; people are assholes, and there's just as many good people who become cops as bad yeah. people. Yeah, I'm saying if I got if I got caught with a you know, bust a tail light or. A, didn't have my license on me or something like that. I mean, I'd probably think that cop was a real, real jerk, you know? Yeah, but, and I mean, they're, it, to the, to, to some extent, they are just doing their jobs. If you, and I'm the kind of guy who, if I get pulled over for a speeding ticket and I was speeding, you know, you got me. I know the rules. I disobeyed them. You got me. Sorry. Give I me mean, a ticket, you know, but if you, if yeah. you try and give me shit for something I didn't do, or you start interrogating me on something that I have no, uh, reason to answer to you two, you're you're gonna hear it at the same time, you know. Getting arrested for public intoxication certainly sucks. I can testify to that. Sam, have you ever? Uh, Sam, ha do you have any? Uh, have you ever had any run-ins with the law that you you want to talk about? Yeah, the the most egregious was I weigh about uh, one ninety. I had had, uh, I want to say, four shots from 7 to close, which was, uh, I get there about 6.45, and I uh, closed at 2.30 after uh, you know, tips and sign out and everything. He did on there around 3, 3.15. Um, a cop saw me pull out, got behind me, pulled me over. Um, I think legal is an uh, point oh eight. I want to say I blew up a 10 uh, and blam, DUI. Um, it was uh, it was absolutely ridiculous, and everything went well. Um, he's like, you know, last thing we want you to do is a blow in this, and I, rather than just tell a sob story, I'll tell a possible solution for other people. Now, if you're rich, you're going to get the DUI that you deserve. But if you drink like I did, this may get you out of it. And I didn't know it at the time. Tell mm -hmm. them that you would be more than happy to take a breathalyzer. Don't decline it, whatever. You swear God, whatever you do, because you're going to do UI for sure. Um, tell them that you are willing to take the breathalyzer in the presence of your attorney, or in some states you may have to say an attorney. I don't know if you're allowed to request your own. But if you can, either way, in the presence of an attorney, 
and I'll be happy to do this because according to your right, you are allowed to have an attorney present when you are doing anything that can result in your arrest. By the time the attorney actually gets to you, and they're going to have to call him, wake him up, whatever, my 08, my, my point ten would have been a point oh eight by the time I piss tested, and I would not have gotten a DUI. Right. I didn't know that at the time. That is a wonderful, wonderful, um, I don't want to say trick, it's your right. It's a wonderful right that is on your side. Right. And if you're ripped, that's not going to do you any good. I mean, you're probably only driving a few blocks. Uh, you do it every night. You had four, four probably baby shots over the course of an entire night where you're like in a hot box DJ, probably sweating, sweating it out and dancing it out or moving around and stuff. And like, exactly. You're just ready to go home. You've done it a million times, but apparently that particular night, because the cop got behind you and, uh, is trying to raise money for your uh, state there. Uh, you, you you apparently blew a little bit over the limit. And, uh, you know, did you have to go to jail or anything? Or uh, they took me to the uh, the little holding <clears throat> holding thing they have for a few hours, and then a uh, friend picked me up. I came home. My license was of course suspended. I had to spend uh, three nights and four days in this mandatory uh, four day counseling thing. And I, I was sure that they wanted to get rid of me because before I went in, I realized, all right, I, I'm 39 now. I was a 34, 35, or maybe 35 year old guy. It has nothing but a few speeding altercations. I had one uh, criminal trespassing because I had a breakdown that I was cutting through private property and got, believe it or not, popped. Um, nothing on me whatsoever. And I knew that I had no drug or alcohol offenses on me, so they were not going to want to send me into further rehab. So every time they gave a statistic, I was a pain in the ass. Um, they said that uh, some unbelievable, I forget the number, some unbelievably high number of traffic accidents involve alcohol. And I said, uh, I raised my hand and said that that was uh, because of the way they did the statistic, that if you have a beer, and you drive to the corner and hit a car, and they test you and find the beer, and they say the beer is a factor. Whereas if you would have driven down the street and not had a beer, you would have hit the car anyway. And <laughs> they hate answers like that. So they finally just dispatched me I, a whole bunch yeah. of Yeah, Lo logic. <laughs> let, let me bring up another topic from that just kind of randomly. You sparked it in my brain. Is that uh, I don't know if you guys have seen. There's this new movie coming out soon with uh, Denzel Washington, where he is <clears throat> a pilot, right, of just like a, like a regular commercial airline. Yeah. And the engines fail on the plane, and they're pretty much like plummeting out of the sky. And he does some crazy maneuver that they find that nobody else, you know, it was like a thousand to one that anybody could have pulled off what he did. Yeah. But in the movie, he's he's going to court. And he might be put in jail for like 30 years because after the crash of the plane where he saved everybody on the plane in a way that nobody else could have done, they found alcohol in his system. And so he's going to jail for it. And that's kind of, I think, like what you're saying. It's like, well, if I have one beer, I'm still 10 times better than the worst driver out there on the road. And it hasn't played a, a, a part in it at all. But yeah, over the bad. course of a whole night at work and stuff. I mean, exactly. yeah, I mean, you you could say you could say, oh well, you know, the reason he had the accident is because he took some cold medicine, and you know, unless you're as small as my girlfriend is, you know, that's not the case. You can make that case about Pepsi if you wanted to, and you can make the case too that the effect that this one beer has on me, or let's even say, let's say three beers, the effect that three beers has on me before I drive is less of an impact than if I was to go, say, uh, wake up and go drive within 10 minutes of myself waking up without fully letting my brain readjust and kind of yeah. get its bearings before I start my day, which how many people do that right before work? They wake up and they leave right away to go to work so they can get as much sleep as they can. Hey, Sam. I'm a huge Rush Limbaugh fan, but he said something <laughs> once which I absolutely love. 
He said, the way you can tell that the DUI laws are set up to entrap people is because if it was about safety, the law would read, if you have any alcohol in your system, it is illegal to drive a car. And then there would be a period at the end of that sentence. By making it ambiguous, you make it impossible for anybody to tell. You could say once an hour, but let's say you're there for three hours, you tip the first time. The bartender says, oh, you know what? He tipped and he's cute. So she makes it a little bit stronger because she likes you. You drink three in three hours. You practically drink almost four and a half because she free poured it. Bam, you got a DUI. That proves that it's a money racket. Yeah, right. That about happens to me all the time, by the way. Bartenders see me and they're like, that is a beautiful man. And I, they just, they just <laughs> keep it going. <laughs> <laughs> and uh and Sam you, you like uh petite girls isn't that isn't that uh a correct view right there yeah, I I love I I've only dated like two quote unquote normal sized girls in my life yeah my girl so right don't... now is like uh four uh no she's five foot my my ex was 410 oh, my wow. current girl is 52 yeah so you, you like small girl girls like... You like small girls, but how do you feel about small apartment uh, living spaces in Agenda 21? <laughs> oh, that is, that's insane. And I think the only people that would be happy there are the people that I date. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I got addicted. Uh, my wife and I, well, my wife, my long story there, my wife and I separated about three and a half years ago. Sorry to hear and, that. She, we're going, we're going through a bankruptcy that incurred, like I said, when I lost my cab driving job and I was finishing college and losing my studio at the same time. Um, I should say studio job. <laughs> the, um, we haven't been able to get divorced yet. So on paper, I'm still married, <clears throat> but, uh, my ex knows about my girlfriend and, uh, we, we all get along. She's moved on. So There's when no I say when's the issue. Yeah, everybody thinks he's got a wife and a girlfriend, but yeah, that's why. My girlfriend and I buy season passes to a, an amusement park called Cedar Point every year. And we started watching these documentaries that were on at night because TV's awful and the and motel were just flipping through the cable. They had these prison documentaries. And it struck me that uh, one of the prisons, the, the, the square feet of living space, was only like a matter of, I think, was five, four or five feet smaller than the Agenda 21 unit that he wanted us in. And I've watched a number of these documentaries because we hang up there all summer and it's on all season. It is, I mean, when you hear people say prison dimensions, depending on the prison, that's exactly what it is. Yeah, and I mean, I'll, I'll vouch for that, talking about small living spaces. I mean, I don't know how much it speaks to the fact that my couch is in front of my computer. I live in a studio apartment with my girlfriend. Granted, a big studio, and I'm not complaining about it, but living standards have gone down substantially in the past, you know, 10, 20, 30 years. Uh, even if you're not talking about FEMA camps, if you're just talking about real people and where they live, think about when you were like a little kid, you know? And your parents, how many people were friends with your family and people that you knew close to you lived in apartments? And now look at yourself and people around you. How many people do you know now who live in apartments? And apartment living has become the standard now, which I look at that as a problem because, and I know I've said this before and I sound like a broken record, but there used to be a time in this country where it didn't matter if you had a good education. It didn't even matter if you were that smart. As long as you were willing to work hard, you could have a good life and you could have a house. And a house has almost become like a, like a fallacy. Like how many people actually own a house these days? If you own a house at all, you're doing pretty well for yourself. And I think that it's, it's part of just the slow shift of kind of putting us into a sense of, uh, of, of soft slavery that we are just starting to accept these smaller dwellings and these lower pays and these shittier jobs because all the good jobs have been sent away. And 
I, I, I don't know if you guys want to speak to that, what you think about that. I feel like that's just kind of part of the plan is, you, you know, I consider living in an apartment this small. I do consider it a jail cell, but it's a jail cell that there's no bars on it. But how do I get out? You know, if you are recording this show, you should take everything that you said starting with that last segment to what you just finished and use it as the ad. That's how much I agree with it. That was <laughs> the whole part, the whole rant. Perfect. <clears throat> what do you, I mean, d like you were gone for a little bit. Of that. I kind of missed that, yeah. But, what uh... I'm saying is that uh, over the past you know, few <clears throat> decades that the living standard has substantially decreased, the expectation of a job has decreased. Like I was saying, you know, with your dad – and your grandpa, and the same thing with Sam, it's like you're like it didn't matter. You didn't have to be a smart guy. You didn't have to right have back. an education. As long mm -hmm. as you were willing to work hard, there was a job for you, and you could have a good life, and you could have a house. And now there's no expectation of either. Even if you have a degree, even if you're an educated, intelligent person, it's just kind of an expectation that you're going to work for shit wages, and you're going to live in a tiny apartment. And that's just kind of how people live now. And that's like the paradigm of the soft slavery. We're being put into a jail cell that there's no bars on it, but there's no way to get out at the same time. How do you? What do you think about that? I mean, I, I do see things sort of shrinking in, in, in living spaces in regards to the way that people live in terms of uh, from the last generation to now and the generation before that to that generation to now. And uh, I agree with that, what you were saying, man. And, um, you know, yeah, we'd all like to have giant acreage, and uh, apparently that's only for a select few, and uh, yeah. and they're so elite and fancy that they can have big, gigantic farms, but yet we get cracked down on for uh, trying to have some raw milk or trying to have a barbecue well, with our friends or... You could have, let's say, 50 years ago, you could get a job working at a factory or working mm -hmm. at a manufacturing plant or some right. sort of industrial job, and you could make good enough money that you could go buy some land, and if you were smart about it, you could plant your own food, and you could eliminate that bill, which gives you even more money and gives you more room to prosper. And now we've just been kind of pushed into this idea of, the shittiest of, like, the, the lowest end jobs, it's like, think about it. And I, I don't mean any disrespect to anybody when I say this. I don't, I'm not trying to insult anybody. But the type of jobs that I do and that a lot of people that I know do when I'm not doing the media speaks and when I'm not uh, trying to move this business forward so that I can make something of it, but when I'm right. just trying to pay my bills, that the type of jobs that are available to me now are minimum wage retail jobs to where the type of jobs that your average person does these days mm. is the jobs that were were jobs that people with mental disability and people who had things that made them okay. not capable of doing the the more higher paying work were doing and mm -hmm. like and, and even like high school kids it's like how many when you go to the grocery store when 10 not even 10 Five years ago, when you went to the grocery store, it was all high school kids. But now it's all people in their 20s and 30s, and high school kids just yeah. have jobs. Looks like the grocery store looks like community college now. Hey, um, <laughs> I, I wrote this down, and I wanted to ask this tonight. How the hell are there so many farming, growing, and agricultural laws, rules, enforcements, raids, crackdowns? bunch of color of law, juries, this whole court system, and all the federal raids and the federal government, and they're not big brother, they're big daddy. And they got their eye on us. They know every move we're going to make. If they're watching this video, we're on the list. We already know that. They open up the door to all this other stuff, but why are there so many why are there so many rules on business when it comes to farming and growing anything and I mean not just marijuana but corn and wheat and good to eat stuff like I mean jalapenos and tomatoes and we need lettuce and all that 
and carrots and all that other good stuff, but I want it to be like fresh <clears throat> and grown and perfect and the way God intended it to be. And why are there so many rules on that? I oh. think the reason for that personally is just because things like that, growing your own food, becoming independent, becoming self-dependent, is a way to break out of that slavery. When yeah, you're, you're not going to have a garden in your front yard either. When you're able to do things and produce things for yourself that eliminate bills and eliminate the need for money for certain aspects of your life, that's a that's a tool in getting out of the slavery, getting out of the shackles of big government, and they don't want that. They don't want you growing your own food. They want you going and buying it from the grocery store that pays them millions of dollars for the legislation that they want. They they are controlled by the people who make the food that they want you to buy. That's my opinion. Sam, I'll let you go from there. <clears throat> who, was, who was the gentleman that um, they wanted to take his garden down? I want to say it was posted at InfoWars. And the neighbors were petitioning to allow him to have it. I was very happy to hear about that. That uh, his neighbors were even saying, why are you taking his garden down? Yeah, it's like, it's just his garden. I mean... What's the big deal? I mean, well, I mean it, it, it was a little bit of community unity, if you will, and uh, that's another piece of America that I'm sure Kyle would say that 10 years ago was there more than it is now. Yeah, and, and they now, have... Happily, it's like, hey, the neighbors are like, wait a minute. this is, He's growing lettuce in his front yard. This is the guy that yeah. gives us our vegetables on Thanksgiving. We like this guy. Yeah, yeah, leave him alone. Fuck off. That guy gives me good food. And it's like I got a guy who I, uh, <clears throat> like I said, I work at a gas station. There's a manager who's a manager at a different store, but sometimes he comes in and helps out at ours. And when he comes in, just about every time this guy comes in, he brings me a big bag of, like, peppers and tomatoes and all this really good stuff. And it's like that guy, he grows it all non-GMO on his own land. And if the feds were to come after him, I'd be standing there with picket signs. Why? Well, obviously, because I'm a political-minded person who wants to support people's rights, but just on a very primitive level, dude gives me really good food for free, yeah. you know? <laughs> it's it's going to be the only thing that saves us. When, I guess it kind of all goes back to um, what we were saying about the Arabs and the Palestinians, and then we were talking about the Indians being conquered, and then the tickets. And now this, if we could somehow unify, it would shut so many of these problems down at one time. But unfortunately, that doesn't look like the direction our country's going in. No, our, our yeah. country's going where, the, where that is right there. <laughs> and people, people look at us, and when I was driving taxi, there was a misconception among African Americans that you would lock your doors when you saw an African American. And that's only because they know that they're black and they walk by your car and they heard the door lock. What they didn't realize was that we also do it to white people. When we see them walking near our taxi, we lock the door. Um, uh, I think the fact that somebody would look at this show and say, well, look, there's not an African American on the show, they wouldn't realize that we haven't found an African American that was to be on the show. Well, Sam, I can tell you this in uh, San Diego, especially downtown, uh, yeah, like 90, over 90% of the cab drivers are from Africa. And uh, you, you live near African people. I do as well. We have a lot of African exchange students who come to NIU, and since I live so close, I meet them. And I will say, people from Africa and also people from Saudi Arabia are the most polite, respectful, intelligent people I have ever met. People from Africa and people from Saudi Arabia are, they're almost on a different level than Americans when it comes to respect for your fellow man. Uh, how do you feel about Oh, it? yeah. Like, <laughs> I don't know oh. many from Saudi Arabia, but yeah. Yeah, well, the way I feel about it is, uh, I, yeah, I've had some uh, actually close personal friends uh, from like Ethiopia and stuff and uh, different parts of Africa there. And uh, these guys were all from a country, uh, I can't recall the name right now, but it's like, you know, you yeah. get in the cab and I'm like, dude, your accent and stuff, you're, you're from some part of, yeah, Kenya and there's another smaller uh, region. 
and yeah, it's like a gigantic majority of them are all from over there in Africa, and they come here, and I don't know, they they have some kind of uh, thing where they get a job driving cabs or something. I don't know, but I mean, it's like if they can get their act together to do that. I mean, when when we talk about uh, jobs moving overseas and stuff, and then the new Karate Kid comes out, and it's like they had to move from Chicago to. Uh, China or Japan or somewhere in Asia uh, uh, so that uh, Will Smith's kid could learn uh, karate there from Jackie Chan, if you guys saw that movie. But movie. There, was a, there was an underlying weird thing where it's like, hey, we're over here in Asia because uh, uh, our car company is moving here from America. You know? Ooh, wow, well, I mean, that's just a real that's, – that's not, in my opinion, propaganda or anything like that. That's just the way it is, you know? That's They're like, oh, it's reality. It's all good. Like, I don't think it's a good thing, <laughs> and I think, I think the movie could have done a better job of addressing that as a problem. But, yeah. I mean, that wasn't really what they were about. Well, they were going for the social adjustment of the kid, but <clears throat> anyways. Yeah. Hey, uh, uh, hey um, Sam, what, what, what kind of uh, movies do you like? What kind of entertainment uh, movies do you get into when you have some time off? Um, I'm a big horror movie fan, believe it or not. I absolutely love horror films. And I love um, a lot of old movies. Like, um, I, you can go way back to, like, the, my girlfriend and I watched, like, Alfred Hitchcock, Twilight Zone, Night Gallery, a lot of the really old sci-fi stuff. Like, if you've ever seen One Step Beyond... And yeah. I think that Peter Sellers was the funniest man that ever lived. You got Kyle's vote. I love old movies as well. Old movies Pink Panther. Movie. Pink Panther, good stuff. <clears throat> hey, well, I, I, I'll make a recommendation to you, Sam. If you like more horror movies and stuff, have you ever seen the movie God Bless America? I just watched it yesterday. No. It's a movie about a guy who's like just your average middle-aged man and his doctor tells him that he's got a brain tumor that he's pretty much going to die. And this dude, like the main point is they have a show that's pretty much like a American Idol. And he just hates this show so much and the way that people care about it and just care about things that don't matter while not caring about other people, not being polite not caring about how what they do affects other people. And the guy is pretty much just tired with the way our society has moved. And since he finds out that he's about to die, he just goes around killing all these people. Like, he go, anybody who's, like, rude or just, you know, uh, self-centered, doesn't care about other people. Like, there's a scene where he's sitting in the movie theater and the there's some teenagers behind him and all of them are talking on their cell phones and laughing and being really loud. And one of them throws some popcorn at him, and so he just he just lets him have it. Which a lot of people don't like it because it's like ah, oh, it's gory and it's him just shooting American citizens up. But I don't know. I think it, aside from the fact that yeah, he's going around killing people, it had a pretty pretty decent message to it. That's something you might want to check out. Oh, I, I definitely I definitely will do just that. I, I I'll be I'll be watching it probably before work uh, Monday when I work again. Do you have Netflix? I have to. Huh? Do you have Netflix? Uh, no. There, it, it is rumored that the Pirate Bay is a wonderful place. <laughs> oh, okay, I okay. I wouldn't know from personal experience. Yeah, you wouldn't know anything about that. Hey, you guys, we just came up on uh, two hours here, and uh, what do you say we all kind of do our little closing here and call it a call it a pretty good live show there? I I thought it went well. Yeah, yeah I like it as much. We, yeah. uh, we definitely got to have you on again, Sam. Uh, you're a really good guest to have on the show. I'm sure that you'll be back on the live show or maybe commenting in some reports in the future if that's something that you want to do. I would love to. As a matter of fact, I told my girlfriend that I was going to pick up a webcam if I was going to be on this again. So I'll try to grab one by Saturday. Yeah, definitely. We can definitely try and have you on again. Um, one more thing just before we start closing up the show, which this is something that I wanted to do before we go, is <clears throat> um, D-Leg, I know you've seen this. Sam, you will be the first to see it, and then about 15 seconds after, anybody who's watching. But here's our website right here, themediaspeaks.com. And in, I believe, two days is when the domain officially transfers over. Are you guys ready for this? The new website. Everybody ready? You ready? Dun, 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 dun. Play some music, dude.
<laughs> the new website. This is what it's going to look like. Um, we're still working on it a lot. We're using WordPress.org software, which is a, a little bit more difficult to work with than what we've been doing now. But we are working on it. This is what the new website is going to look like. It's pretty similar. There's a few differences. But once you see the website switch over to this format, that means that we are officially on a private domain and we're, we're uh, moving forward. So this We're taking it to the next level on the Internet, and that's great news, man. Yeah, we're taking it I to the next level. I am looking at it now. Huh? Sorry, I didn't hear you there. Yeah, good work, yeah. Kyle. Good I'm work, Kyle. Good job. Now. As long as you got my GMO wrapped up, there they are. Well, you know what? Now I'm going to <coughs> my graphics. I can't do them because my camera is too nice for the computer. What kind of camera are you using over there? It is a. It's right beside me here. Panasonic HD C F D five. Yeah. Oh, yeah and I, think I googled that once. I was talking to you about it a little bit. And you're saving yeah, it up for a laptop right laptop. now, Samma. So, you know, I, if any of you know, I don't know what kind of a laptop I would need to be able to process the video in that. Maybe a, a 15 to 25 minute video in Premiere in high def. Yeah, you're going to need something a little bit powerful for that. You're going to need probably something with like at least 2 gigs of RAM. You're going to need probably like a dual core processor in Windows 7. Um... Not you're not talking too expensive these days though, because computer technology moves really really fast. Um, for a laptop, you're looking at like probably like a five six hundred dollar laptop. How much do you think it would be used? Sorry. Like uh, like eBay or Craigslist. Uh, you could probably find one for like used, probably like three four hundred dollars. Which like my computer, I highly recommend desktop. And the reason that I recommend a desktop is because, yeah, you can't bring it around with you. It's not as portable. But a desktop is it has better cooling because it's bigger. There's more room for the air to go through. It's more upgradable. If anything ever better comes along or you find that you don't have to upgrade, you don't have to buy a whole new computer. You can just upgrade it and throw a few more sticks in there. And it's a hell of a lot cheaper. You can find a decent computer that would do everything you need on like Tiger Direct for like two, three hundred dollars easily. You know what? If if during your travels, if you find one that you recommend, give me a holler and I might do just that. Well, hey, you because... know what? If, if you're in, uh, which I could talk to you about this a little bit, but if you're looking for a new computer, um, I could possibly work something out with you for my old computer because I recently upgraded and like doubled my computer capability. But I had an old one which I was using for Adobe Premiere and everything up until uh, around the time that I brought D Lake and Corden. The only thing that it needs is a CD ROM drive and a hard drive. But that would be a hell of a lot cheaper than buying a new computer. And that's something that I just have sitting around, you know. If it was going towards a better cause and going towards, you know, doing stuff like this, I would have no problem with either giving it to you dirt cheap or just sending it to you. That'd be tight, no, you guys. You guys are hanging out. I definitely out. want to buy it because I know that's going to help the show. And I've been saving for it anyway. So, I mean, yeah, no, that's perfect. And like I said, if it, if it handles high def, uh, 15 to 25 minutes if I start babbling. Um, that would be wonderful. I don't mind paying for that at all. Yeah, we can definitely I talk have, about that. And I could probably even drop it off because I got family in Ohio. Oh, I don't mind paying for shipping, but you're welcome to come down. I put you on the correct use. <laughs> well, there you go. You guys are really hanging out, and you're doing all your little private networking now. But uh, oh, let me... Uh, public, we're not hiding nothing. Yeah, I see full transparency here. Let me host wrap this up, Kyle, and... Uh, Thank you, everyone, for joining us. And uh, if you're watching this on the replay on YouTube, uh, I had a great time today uh, broadcasting live for the MediaSpeaks.com. Our special guest, our special guest, the correct views. That's Sam. Thank you, and I look forward very, very much to being back. Um, if anybody is listening, do me a favor. 
And uh, if you take anything away from what we've said tonight, I think it's a matter of, well, we didn't plan on it going in this direction. But as always, division among people is becoming more and more evident as the major problem. Yeah, and it's, used, it's being used as a tool against us. Right. So use your senses and your keen ability to recognize dividing and conquer, uh, divide and conquer tactics by uh, not only uh, the global elite, but the mainstream media and uh, all these sort of propagandists for that, you know, bringing up racism and all that other nonsense and garbage. We don't, you know, that's not how we talk here, you know, here at the Media Speaks. We're all cool, man. We're a bunch of cool cats, a bunch of cool guys, and we hang out with uh, cool guys like Sam. It's just how we roll. Thanks for joining us today on uh, The Media Speaks, and look forward to our show next Saturday when, uh, hey, we might have Sam back on. We're looking forward to getting uh, Kyle. Who, who are we looking forward to uh, next week? Um, we're going to have, I don't know if it's going to be next week or the week after that, but okay. uh, eventually here we're going to have uh, either next show or the one after that, definitely. Uh, we're going to be trying to get Lucy and Farrow on, who is from Indigo Children Radio. He's a really smart guy. He's not as political-minded as us, but he talks more about the spiritual, mental end of things, um, right. keeping positive mind frames and how to how to achieve the things you want through yeah. um keeping your mind on a higher level than what the globalist machine wants you to keep it on. And he's a really smart guy, and, and I'm looking forward right, to Right, and I heard some of your uh, previous broadcasts with uh, Lucy and Farrell there from Indigo Children where you guys were getting into lucid dreaming. And that's something that uh, I'm going to bring up on that show if we get them on. And uh, I hope to have Sam on again. And you know, if, if I may, I, maybe and this is the dumbest thing I've ever done. I almost forgot. RevolutionRadio.com. Okay. If you're anywhere near Canton, Ohio, please come to the Conestoga Grill. I'm speaking on libertarianism oh. during the Canton Money Mob, which is right. a uh, it's an organization in Canton that will hit one business and ask everybody to come there on one day and spend at least ten dollars. Oh, and is that website again? Uh, the Revolution Radio. Um, I don't. I think it might be revolutionradio.com. I'm not sure. If not, uh, uh, look Lord, at... Revolutionradio.org. Uh, okay. Okay, uh, organization. There, there's a money bomb going on, and I'm speaking at the Conestoga Room, also called the Conestoga. And I'm right. speaking on libertarianism. I guess there's going to be a couple members of Canton City Council going to be there. And I'm, I'm looking forward very much to this, and I almost forgot to mention it. I'm on from 2 to 3 p.m. All right. Well, that's fantastic. I mean, Sam's going to be speaking there. You heard all the information. And, I mean, what can I say? That's the caliber of guests that we get on TheMediaSpeaks.com. Definitely. Thanks for joining us. I'm David Lake, D. Lake for Prez. Kyle, you guys, uh, thanks a lot. Love it. <laughs>